Well, welcome to the Lone Star Conference Digital Network as we get set for this afternoon's matchup. Game four of this four-game set between Lubbock Christian and West Texas A&M in Canyon at Wilder Park. Good afternoon and welcome. Bryce Sheets coming your way on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. And again, a blustery day, but a pleasant day here in Canyon at Wilder Park. And so uh, it will be an interesting matchup. Game one went to Lubbock Christian. They won that one 8-5. to five. West Texas won game two, six to three, and then last night at the nightcap, it was Lubbock Christian who won that one, seven to three. Right now, as we look at the Lone Star Conference standings, Angelo State and West Texas A&M are tied for the top spot, both with 24 and seven records. Lubbock Christian is in third with a 22 and nine mark, and then Texas A&M, Kingsville, 20 and 11, St. Edwards, 20 and 15, and then UT Tyler, 18 and 14. So for the Buffaloes, of course, this month of April, of month of April, uh, they take on Lubbock Christian this weekend. Then they get to go to Angelo to, to uh, take on Angelo State and to go to San Angelo to take on Angelo State next weekend. And then they still have a series left this month with Kingsville and St. Edwards, along with an international series sprinkled in as well. And so, again, important game today for West Texas A&M as they get ready for this one. As we take a look at the starting lineups for tonight, uh, for today, I should say, for Lubbock Christian, Eduardo Acosto will be in left field. He'll lead things off. George Mendezona, the senior third baseman, bat second. Larry Letha in center field will bat third today. He is a senior. Mason Donahoe, the junior DH, bats fourth. Jared Gibson, the catcher for this afternoon. Sophomore will bat fifth. Kate Ward, the senior first baseman, bats sixth. Carson Ogilvy, the shortstop, bats seventh. Edgar Hernandez, is in right field, he'll bat eighth, and Caden Hensley is at second base, and he'll bat ninth. For West Texas A&M, Eddie Savoy will bat first. He will play second base today. Ryan Johnson in left field will bat second. Kennedy Badgett, the catcher, bats third. Adam Becker at third base will bat fourth. Eric Ortiz moves up to the fifth place spot. He was playing first base today. Will Finney drops down to sixth. He's in right field. Nolan Kuhn is the DH. He will bat seventh. Shortstop Isaiah Madrid will bat eighth. And Paul Whitman, the freshman center fielder, will bat ninth. Buffaloes come in, as mentioned, with an overall record of 26 and 7. Lubbock Christian 24 and 9 as we get set for this one today. And again, a bit of blustery conditions. You can kind of see how the wind is blowing around uh, throughout the area just a little bit, but game time temperature is a warm one, 81 degrees. We're expected to reach 83 as we go throughout the day. We'll take a timeout. We'll do so and come back with our first pitch, but first this break on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. WT student athletes drink low-fat chocolate milk post-workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low-fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low-fat chocolate milk to your post-workout routine. Go Bucks! And again, you can see blustery conditions here at Wilder Park. Buffaloes will be in their black tops with maroon numerals trimmed in white and white pants for today's game, while Lubbock Christian will be in their red tops, gray pants, and white numerals as we get set to get this one underway. And again, for the Buffaloes trying to win this one to earn a split of this 
four-game series. So that will be what is on the mind of everyone for WG today. Isaac Keen gets the start. Isaac, a senior right-handed pitcher, comes in with a record of 2 and O with a 332 earned run average. He's appeared in six ball games this season. This is his first game start for the 22 campaign. He's pitched in 19 innings. He's allowed 13 hits, eight runs, seven of those earns. He's walked nine and has struck out 21. However, batters are only hitting 183 against the right hander as Isaac. Keene, six feet, 185 pound senior out of Norwalk, Connecticut, in Keene State. It's his warm up tosses in. And he gets set to face Eduardo Acosta as Acosta will come up. Eduardo with a 364 batting average. This is his 34th game to start this season and his 130th plate appearance. He has 47 hits, nine of those are double, three triples, and five home runs. And he's also scored 41 times this season. And so Eduardo Acosta will lead things off, followed by George Mendezona and Larry Letha for Lubbock Christian. The Chaps with a good crowd on hand here as they have the entire series. And, of course, today an excellent day. Of course, this contest brought to you by Metadrive Pharmacy. Thanks to all our sponsors for helping to bring Buffalo baseball right here on the Lone Star Conference Network. And so, again, as we get set for our leadoff hit work, Edward Ocosta will work his way up as we get set to get this one underway. For the Buffaloes, again, it will be Eric Ortiz at first. Eddie Savoy is at second base. Isaiah Madrid is the shortstop. And Adam Becker at third. In left field is Ryan Johnson. In center field is Paul Whitman. And in right field is Will Finning. The catcher, of course, Kennedy Badgett. And the starting right-hander, Isaac Key. And Isaac gets ready as he faces Eduardo Acosta. Thanks, of course, to our Thunder Vision crews who are bringing you the pictures for today's contest. First pitch on the way. is in there for a strike. Good opening pitch for the senior right-hander. The team that gets off to the best start, obviously, that has proven well in this three games so far in this series. Again, the Buffs tied with Angelo State for the top spot here. This is lifted out to right field. Fenning circles underneath, and he is able to pull that one in. So fly out to right field for out number one for Acosta. That'll bring up George Mendezona as George makes his way up. Mendezona coming to the plate with a 378 batting average. This is his 120th at bat. He has 45 hits, eight of those doubles, seven home runs. He's driven in 26. And he has scored 37 runs for Lubbock Christian this season. Batting from the left side. First pitch swinging. Sends it down to Ortiz who grabs it. Under hands over to first. In time to Keene for out number two. So George Mendenzona has retired 3-1 to one for out number two. So quickly the Buffs taking advantage here in the early going of the top of inning number one. Again, wind blowing out of the west, west-northwest at about 15 miles an hour. 81 degrees, our game time temperature. And Larry Letha makes his way to the plate. Letha, 336 batting average coming into this one. This is his 114th at bat. He's got 38 hits on the season. 11 of those doubles. He has one triple and 11 home runs. He's hit three yesterday of his 11 home runs, and he looks at strike one. Aletha, the center fielder, batting from the right side. Bit of an open stance. Keen, ready to go. His pitch on the way. Good breaking ball, but just a little low. That evens the count at one and one.
Should he get aboard, Mason Donahoe in the on-deck circle for Lubbock Christian. As Letha gets ready, this one's popped up down the right field line, giving Chase his finning, and that one is out of play. That turns into a long strike. So one ball and two strikes for Aletha. Usually in this spot, or I should say the first two games of this series for Lubbock Christian, it was Luis Navarra who had a great first game in this series, and he has had the hot bat for Lubbock Christian. He's usually in the third spot. And that one hits Letha right on the helmet. Breaking ball, it did not break, and so... Larry will make his way down to first base. And that will bring up Mason Donahoe, the designated hitter. And you can watch the breaking ball that just stayed up and would not break. You can tell by Isaac's body language. He knew as soon as he released it, it wasn't going to curve the way he wanted it to. So Letha aboard. He was hit by a pitch. And that brings up Mason Donahoe. Donahoe batting 349. This is his 87th plate appearance this season. Outside pitch is ball one. Donahoe, who has 30 hits, four of those doubles, four home runs. He's driven in 24, and he scored nine runs for Lubbock Christian, batting in the four spot today. Inside, and that is down the first baseline and foul right off the umpire at first base. Find out how tough those guys are. <laughs> they take that was a good they got the umpire right on the leg. He's no big deal. I'd still be rubbing dirt on it. So Donahoe settles back in. 1-1 one, one count. Keene checks the runner. Letha at first base. Now comes home with it, and that's going to be driven out to left field. Giving chase, trying to get underneath, and it got caught in the wind, and that was a miscue for Ryan Johnson. One run comes home for Lubbock. Here's the throw to third, not in time. As... Donahoe is going to benefit with a triple. And that one is where Ryan Johnson just got caught up in the wind. Looked like he had a good eye on it. And again, this wind swirling a bit. He looked like he was coming in. And then it just confused him, got by him, and rolled back to the fence. And that allowed Donahoe to get around to third base. Larry Letha scores the first run of the ball game, and that brings up Jared Gibson, the catcher. So one to nothing in favor of Lubbock Christian. Gibson looks at a strike. Gibson batting 336 on the season. It's his 114th plate appearance. He has 38 hits. 11 of those are doubles, two triples, and three home runs. Gibson batting from the right side, close stance. Pops this one out to right field, and that one may be gone. And that is, that got in the wind, and a two-run home run for Jared Gibson. As Gibson got a hold of that. back-to-back -back hits and there was an error so they did actually they did call Donahoe an error on that E7 you watch this hit he just got this one in up in the air again that wind blowing toward right field so that one just carried out into right field and now has given the chaps a three to nothing lead here in the top of the first brings up Kate Ward Betting 316. He's playing first base today. 
Ward looks at a strike. This is his 20th at bat. Ward, who has six hits on the season, one double, two home runs. He's going to pitch hit roll primarily, but playing first base yes, last night and then again today. Takes a cut and comes up empty. It's down in the count. It's 0 and 2. And again, that's because of the injury to Luis Navarro. As their senior catcher in game one and first baseman in game two just took a bad hop pitch from his third baseman over to him, and that went off of the uh, hit him in the face, is what it did. And there's a swing and coming up empty is Ward. That is the first strikeout, and that is out number three for Isaac Keen. And so three runs come across on two on one one hit and one air and one left on base. We have played a half inning of play. Lubbock Christians jumped out to a three to nothing lead. We'll take a timeout. Be back for the bottom half of the first right after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. We are Carpet Tech, and we are family. More than carpet cleaners, we're a team. Diving right in, not afraid to invest in our work and each other. We're killing it day in and day out, never shrinking from a challenge. Our people are one part passion, one part grit, and about a zillion parts awesome. And we are always looking to add to our family. So what are you waiting for? For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. Well, welcome back as we get set for the bottom half of the first inning. The Buffs trail already 3 to nothing in this one after a two-run home run from Jared Gibson following Mason Donahoe's hit, which they ruled a single, and then he advanced as they got past the left fielder. And so an E7 there to allow him to advance. And so um, that's where... Three runs came across for Lubbock Christian on two hits there in the top of the first. The Buffs see what they can do here against Ty Stevenson. Stevenson, the senior, comes in with a 6.28 earned run average. He is 0-2 on the season. This is his eighth game to start. He's pitched in 28 and two-thirds innings, allowed 20, uh, 35 hits, 29 runs, 20 of those earned. First pitch is inside for a ball to Eddie Savoy. Stevenson has walked 16. He struck out 22. That one's down the third baseline, fouling out of play. What good effort by Eddie Savoy as the sophomore got around on that. Eddie playing at second base. So the Savoy with an even stand settles in, ready to go. Looks at a strike on the outside corner. So Savoy down in the count, one and two. Stevenson steps off the rubber, wants to reset with his pitcher, Jerry Gibson. That's going to be driven down the right field line. Foul and out of play. Stevenson takes a long look in at Gibson to get what he wants. Now here's the delivery. That's swung on and fouled out of play once again as well. Following Eddie Savoy will be Ryan Johnson and Adam Badgett to Kind of lead things off for the Buffaloes here in the bottom of the first. Savoy looks at a pitch down low for a ball. Steven 
Wilson. Takes a look inside and gets the delivery. That's going to be low for a ball. So the count full now for Savoy. Three balls and two strikes. Savoy ready to go. Drills that one towards the shortstop. Coming up with it and throwing Ogilvy over to first, but not in time as that gets by the first baseman. Heading to second base is Savoy. So Savoy gets aboard on a hit and advances to second base on the throwing air. So a single score Savoy and an E6 on the throw. As you watch this, good shot hit towards the shortstop. And coming up with it, trying to get over, is Ogilvy. and just made a bad throw to his first baseman, Kate Ward. And again, Kate hasn't probably played first a whole lot. He did last night in game two. Played the complete game at first base. So a runner at second base in Savoy, and that brings up Ryan Johnson, who looks at ball one. Johnson with a 434 batting average for Ryan on the season. This is his 125th pl fourth plate appearance. That one is a base hit down the first base line, and so he'll touch and head to second base. Coming around to score, Eddie Savoy and the Buffs get on the scoreboard thanks to a Ryan Johnson double. Ryan had two doubles yesterday. Starts off this one with a shot down the first base line. So Savoy comes around to score to cut the Lubbock Christian lead three to one. And watch Ryan as this one just right down the first base line. Ward dives for it, but just can't come up with it. And that one rolls back into the right corner. That allows Johnson to get around to second base. So back-to-back -back hits for the Buffaloes. Brings up Kennedy Badgett. Badgett batting 355. Kennedy batting from the right side. Shows bunt, pulls it back. Called strike, though, by the home plate umpire. Badgett, his 108th plate appearance. He has 38 hits on the season. 11 of those are doubles. Down in the count, 0-1. He's down in the dirt for a ball. That evens the count at 1-1. One and one. And Stevenson, this is his eighth game to start this season. Still looking for that first win. The club staked him to a 3 to nothing lead. The Buffs have answered with one run here in the bottom of the first. They get a windy day today. That's inside for a ball. So two balls and a strike for the senior catcher for West Texas A&M. Badgett settles in ready to go. Stevenson's ready. That's hit towards the shortstop. Long throw to first in time, and that will retire Kennedy Badgett, 6-3. to three. That is out number one, and that'll bring up Adam Becker. Batting in the cleanup spot for West Texas A&M. Becker. Becker batting 421 on the season. He has 56 hits. This is his 134th at bat. He has scored 40 runs. He's driven in 59. He's walked 15 times, struck out 21, has 14 doubles, a triple, and 10 home runs. Including a grand slam in yesterday's ball game. Got that in the first inning of game number two. Becker batting from the right side. Junior settles in, ready to go. Drives this one towards Mendezona. Throws it over to first in time, and so Becker is retired 5-3. to three. That's out number two. And that'll bring up Eric Ortiz. Ortiz playing first base today for the Buffaloes. Match from the left side. He has a 4 288 batting average. This is Eric's 112th plate appearance. 
in this 2022 campaign. First pitch outside for a ball. Should Ortiz get aboard, Will Finning in the on-deck circle. Ortiz. Looks at a strike on the outside corner. That evens the count at one and one. Ortiz out of Puerto Rico and Palm Beach State. Takes a cut, comes up empty. So Eric's down in the count, one and two. Club at Christian leads this one three to one here in the top bottom of the first. Ortiz looks at a pitch low for a ball. So that evens the count at two and two. Two balls, two strikes, of course two outs here in the bottom of the first as well. Ortiz sends it down the first baseline and that's fouling out of play. So Ortiz steps back into the batter's box, measures his swing, waits for Ty Stevenson's delivery. Pitches outside for the ball. So that runs the count full for Eric Ortiz. Three balls and two strikes. Ortiz sends this one out to left field, giving chases a coast stunt. He's able to get underneath it, drops the shades, and is able to pull that one in as the wind kind of held it up just a bit. So Ortiz is retired on a fly out to left. So four WT, one run on one on two hits. There was an error, and there was one left on base. And so we played one complete. The Buffs trail Lubbock Christian 3-1. to one. We'll take a timeout and be back for the top of the second right after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. Decent crowd on hand for this one today. A bit of uh, windy conditions, about 81 degrees or game time temperature. Not too bad to be sitting out under the awning and kind of enjoying some springtime baseball here on the campus of West Texas A&M University. To lead things off here is 7, 8, and 9 in the lineup for Lubbock Christian. Kaysen Ogilvy as he looks at ball one from... Isaac Keen, the right-hander. Takes a look in at Kennedy Badgett, gets the pitch that he wants. Pitch on the outside corner just misses a little low for ball two. Ogilvy comes in with a 330 batting average. This is his 101st plate appearance of the season. He has 33 hits. Strike on the outside corner. Carson has six doubles, a triple, three home runs, and he's driven in 14 this season. He has scored 21 runs. 
very dependable shortstop batting from the right side. First uh, swinging, coming up empty on that one. So that runs the count even at two and two. Edgar Hernandez in the on deck circle playing in right field today. Kate Hensley will bat third here in the second inning today. V batting from the right side. Bit of an open stance. Not much, though. He's going to pitch low for a ball. So that runs count full. So three balls and two strikes for Carson Ogilvy. Carson, the sophomore, 5'10", 180 pounds, batting from the right side from Spring, Texas. That breaking ball just didn't break enough on the inside part of the plate. So that'll be a walk. That's the first walk given up by Isaac Keen. Puts a runner aboard for Edgar Hernandez. Hernandez coming in with a 242 batting average. This is the 67th plate appearance for Edgar. Hernandez batting from the right side. He's a senior. Shows bunt. Here's a throw down to first base. Not in time as Ogilvy able to get back. And called that a ball, although that was a good-looking pitch. So 1-0 count for Edgar Hernandez. Edgar out of Puerto Rico. Takes a cut, comes up empty. Here's the throw to second, and yeah, they say they got him in time. Boy, nice throw by Kennedy Badgett as he, in this series, has had good luck picking off base stealers. And so Ogilvy is retired to, to four, and that's out number one. We watch the replay. Kennedy Badgett comes up throwing and gets that to his second baseman, Savoy. Savoy drops the tag on him. And called out by the umpire at second base. So one out. Hernandez looks at a pitch on the outside corner for a strike. So that runs the count to one and two. Hernandez batting from the right side settles in. He is a senior. Get 13 seniors on this Lubbock Christian club. And Hernandez takes a cut, comes up empty for a strikeout. That's out number two. That's the second strikeout of the ball game for Isaac Keen. Again, you look at that swing, just a good pitch, good location for Isaac on the inside part right about just below the belt. And Hernandez could not come up with it. So that brings up Caden Hensley. Hensley 307 at the plate. Looks at a strike. Batting from the left side. Hensley, his 89th plate appearance. He has 27 hits. Five of those are doubles, two triples, and three home runs. Also driven in 14 runs. The Glebby Christian second baseman looks at a ball low. So that evens the count at one and one. Glebby Christian three runs on two hits. They committed an error. Check swing not there. There's going to be ball two. Was Texas one run on one hit, one air, and they left one on base. So the junior second baseman for Lubbock Christian settles back in, batting from the left side, ready to face Isaac Keen. 
Senior right-hander delivers and got the inside corner, but just a little more outside than what he wanted. So that runs a count to three and one. Should he get aboard Eduardo Acosta in the on-deck circle? That's fouled off at the plate and out of play. So that runs a count full. Three balls and two strikes for Caden Hensley. Oh, is it Keen getting the signal on the pitch? Coaching staff wants him to throw. And the senior right-hander looks in at his battery mate and is ready to go. But that pitch is outside, and that'll be his second walk of the inning. So that puts a runner aboard at first base, Hensley. Hensley's only had one stolen base this year, but has good speed over at first base. And that brings up Eduardo Costa. He flied out to right field his first at bat in the first inning. So Costa with a 362 batting average. Batting from the right side, settles in, ready to go. Looks at a ball. Costa from San Germán, Puerto Rico. Also went to Kansas City Community College. The junior's 5'10", 170 pounds. So the 1-0 pitch from Isaac Keene takes the runner at sec at first, Hensley. And time to call the Costa. Thought he took too much time as he looked over a long time over at first base at Hensley. So Keene resets. Kennedy. Sends in the pitch he wants. A quick throw to first base. Sensley is diving back. Inside corner misses for a ball. So 2 0 oh, the count. Again, windy conditions. You can hear the wind blowing in the background. Costa ready, batting from the right side. Takes a swing, comes up empty. So two balls and a strike on the junior outfielder. Costa playing left field as he has this series. Other than when Luis Navarro got hurt in game one yesterday. He came in and played half an inning at third base. He has been in the outfield. Costa sends this to Madrid at short. Madrid over to second in time for the leadoff. And that takes care of the inning as Cole, uh, Caden Hensley is retired 6-4 to four for out number three. No runs. And no hits, no errors, nobody, and, and one left on base. We have played an inning and a half. Lubbock Christian leads this one three to one. As we want to take a timeout, we'll do so and come back with the bottom half of the second right here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading-edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. 
brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shim and Dillon Group for your appointment today. Bud Light, proudly brewed. We well, see, of course, it's Canine Day today, by the way. And so folks bringing their canines here to Wilder Park. I believe it's brought to you in part by the SPCA. And Will Finning will lead things off. As it will be 6, 7, and 8 leading things off here in the bottom of the second inning. Will looks at strike one. He'll be followed by Nolan Kuhn and Isaiah Madrid. Finning. Scottsdale, Arizona, and Paradise Valley Community College. Gets ready for the 1-1 pitch from Stevenson. And that hits Fitting in the back as he'll head down to first base. Breaking ball again that did not break. So that's the first hit batsman for Ty Stevenson. Again, you watch, just trying to get that breaking ball. And Finney tried to turn out of the way, but just caught him in the back. So I'm going to bring up Nolan Kuhn, the DH for today. Kuhn with a 333 batting average for Nolan. This is his 37th plate appearance. Big cut, comes up empty. So Nolan down in the count. 0 and 1. Kuhn, the sophomore out of Yukon, Oklahoma. Batting from the left side. 5'10, 185 pounds. Takes another cut it off speed pitch. He's down in the count. And two. So one of the things I think Lubbock Christians looked at as Nolan is DH'd in this entire series, he does like to swing at the first pitch. And the off-speed pitch can catch him from time to time. He looks at a ball on the outside part of the plate. So one ball and two strikes to Nolan Kuhn. Fenning over at first base, measures his lead off the bag. Ty Stevenson, the right-hander, checks him out of the corner of his eye. Kuhn lifts this out towards the shortstop. Ogilvy circles underneath and is able to pull that one in. So that's out number one for the Buffaloes. That'll bring up Isaiah Madrid, senior shortstop for the Buffs. Madrid from El Paso. 5'10", 165 pounds senior. Settles in the bat from the right side. Played at Western Texas College before coming to WT. Runner off with the pitch. Here's a slow roller hit towards the shortstop. Third baseman's only play is over to first base as Mendezara is the only one that could come up with that. So they had the runner, Will Finning, off with the pitch. And Isaiah Madrid hitting on the first pitch. So Isaiah's retired 5-3 to three for out number two. And that'll bring in the freshman outfielder, Paul Whitman. As he will bat from the left side, Paul comes up with a 344 batting average. Paul in his 65th plate appearance this season. Shows bunt. That's a strike. So Whitman settles in, ready to go. Fanning measures his lead off the bag at second base. That's low in the dirt for a ball. 
So that evens the count in one and one. Sun splashed afternoon here at Wilder Park. Wind out of the west. That's outside for a ball. Steady at 15, but gusting into the mid 20s. That helped the Lubbock Christian catcher with his home run back in the first inning. That's outside for a ball. So Whitman runs the count to three and one. Paul, who has walked 25 times this season. See what Ty Stevenson throws. Outside corner. Oh, they call a strike on that one. As Paul looks back and says, are you sure on that one? That looked pretty outside. Umpire shakes his head yes. So full count. Whitman sends this one out to center field, and that's going to drop in for a base hit. One run's going to come around. Here comes Finning on his way as he will come across. And so Finning able to come home on the Paul Whitman hit. And Paul will get an RBI. And you watch right here as Whitman gets that one, gives it a ride out to center field. And Finning did not hesitate, came around third and all the way in for the score, cuts the Lubbock Christian lead to 3-2. to two. And we go back to the top of the order, Eddie Savoy. And he got a board on a single as Whitman's off on the pitch. And he's in at second base. So Paul Whitman has a stolen base. So Whitman over at second. So one, one ball to Whitman, or to Savoy. Now he looks at a strike, so that evens the count at one and one. Said he take, Savoy takes a long look back just to make sure with the umpire they are in agreement where the pitch was. That's out in the dirt. Whitman was almost off with that pass ball, but Gibson gets it up quickly. So two balls and a strike for Eddie Savoy. Savoy out of Quebec. Sophomore playing second base. Drives this one, golfs this one really down the third baseline and fouling out of play. So that evens the count at two and two. Two outs here in the bottom of the second, but the Buffs have got a run across. Savoy's trying to bring Whitman around. And that one's down in the dirt, and heading to third base is Whitman. So pass ball. So now runner at third base for WT as Whitman has advanced to third. And a full count for Eddie Savoy. So Stevenson that's drilled towards the shortstop. Two hops, throws it over to first base in time for the put out. As Eddie Savoy is retired six to three for out number three. But the Buffaloes do get a run. And they do so on one hit. No errors in the inning and one left on base. We have played two complete. But Christian holds on to their 3-2 lead over West Texas A&M. We'll take a timeout. We'll do so and come back for the top of the third versus this break on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. The 
just completed my academic uh, courses. So now I am starting my research at West Texas A&M University, trying to find out the export of sorghum from United States to China. I cannot express properly how helpful they are. I am proud to be a WT student. Apply to West Texas A&M University right now at wtamu.edu slash apply. Well, again, you see the dugouts as Lubbock Christian and West Texas in a 3-2 ball game. WT trailing the Shaps by one. Lubbock Christian got their three in the first inning. Uh, they have three runs on two hits. One air, and they've left one on base. While WT, two runs on two hits. They've had an air, and they've left two on base today. Isaac Keen back for his third inning of work. So we go to the top of the third. Keen, senior right-hander, comes home with it, and that's first pitch swinging. Fouled out of play for George Mendezona. So Mendezona down in the count 0-1. He grounded out to the first baseman, his first at bat in the first inning. Mendezona, 375 batting average. George batting from the left side, settles in ready to go. Keen also ready, brings it home, and that's on the inside part of the plate for a strike. So Mendezona down in the count 0 and 2. And it will be 2, 3, and 4 in the Lubbock Christian batting lineup. George Mendezona followed by Larry Letha and Mason Donahoe. Mendezona ready. Isaac Keen comes into the inner part of the plate. It bounces out to Isaac, throws it over to first in time for the three, or the one to three put out for round number one. That'll bring up Larry Letha who was hit by a pitch back in his first at bat, and he came around to score on Mason Donahoe's hit. So Larry Letha, batting 336 on the season. It's his 114th plate appearance. Letha, the center fielder. Has some pretty good speed. Sends this one out to right center field. Whitman gives chase. That might find the gap and does as that's off against the fence. Here's the relay in, and Letha's going to stay with a stand-up double. So Larry Letha with a two-bagger. And that'll bring up Mason Donahoe. And again, Letha just extended the arms and sent this one out to left center field. Paul Whitman was shading in right, so we had a long way to run to come over and get that. And Salitha so goes into second and goes with the stand up double. So Donahoe, who got a board on a single, then advanced on the air in left field and then came around to score on Jared Gibson's two run shot. Takes a cut, comes up empty. Top of the third inning, 3-2 ball game. Lubbock Christian with the lead. Getting Lubbock Christian trying to inch closer to both Angelo and West Texas, who lead the conference with 24-7 and seven records. Outside corner just misses for ball. Jared Gibson in the on-deck circle. Donahoe in the four spot. Mason ready to go. Isaac Keen checks the runner at second, then comes to the inside part of the plate. That's a strike. So one ball and two strikes on Donahoe.
nice afternoon here at Wilder Park. People still coming in. That's hit back towards the shortstop. As a liner actually to Madrid. And he's able to pull that one in. And a nice play by Isaiah Madrid. And so Donahoe is retired on the liner. And that's out number two. And that'll bring Jared Gibson to the plate. Gibson, of course, a two-run home run back in his first at bat. Gibson. Batting from the right side. 342 batting average. Keane takes a long look at the runner at second base, and that's Larry Letha. Again, he has good speed. The center fielder for Lubbock Christian. It's fouled off at the plate. And that may be off of Kennedy Badgett. And so the umpire is gonna do him a solid and walk this baseball out to the pitcher to give Kennedy a moment or two to just kind of get reset after taking that foul ball. So no one count for Jared Gibson. Should Gibson get aboard, Cade Ward in the on-deck circle. Gibson batting from the right side. Takes a cut, slow roller hit toward short or second baseman. And Coming up and taking care of it, Eddie Savoy throws it on to Eric Ortiz for the putout as Gibson is retired four to three for out number three. So no runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. We have played two and a half. It's three to two. Lubbock Christian with the lead over West Texas A&M. We'll take a timeout, do so, and be back with the bottom of the third right after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Jayford Roofing has been protecting our community for 15 years. With more than 30,000 homes and businesses protected by our roofing work, we're proud of our ability to provide efficient, lasting solutions for your roofing needs. What makes us stand out from the competition is that we work for you, a dedicated team member who guide you every step of the way. That is the Jayford Advantage. Quality, experience, fast pass scheduling, customer rewards, we have it all. Call Jayford Roofing today for a free inspection. We are Jayford Roofing. We are more. Bottom of the third inning and out still on the hill, Ty Stevenson. And Stevenson, the right-hander, 6'2", 200-pound from Ingram, Texas, played at New Mexico Junior College. And again, 0-2 coming into this one, looking for his first win. His club gave him a 3 to nothing lead, and right now the Buffs trail 3-2. to two. Some other games going on around the conference. Texas a and International over Kingsville. That's in the bottom of the third. They lead that one one to nothing. And Tyler over Texas four to nothing. Check it. That's a softball game. Sorry about that. Tyler over Texas A&M International four to nothing. For the Buffaloes, Brian Johnson takes a. Swing at a, and drops that one foul. He's down in the count 0-2. He'll be followed by Kennedy Badgett and Adam Becker. Johnson batting from the right side. Sends this one out to right to their left center field and giving chase. Letha can't get up to it. And hitting around to second base for his second double of the ball game. Ryan Johnson back-to-back -back doubles. Good way to start off for the Buffs. Some other baseball games taking place. Kingsville leading Commerce 6-4. to four. That's in the top of the seventh.
also Angelo State and St. Edwards are tied at one. That's in the bottom of the third. Lady Buff softball also underway. They're trailing Oklahoma Christian three to nothing. That's in the third. Bunt shown by Badgett. So Kennedy Badgett with a 352 batting average up at the plate. Got a runner in scoring position in Ryan Johnson. 3-2, to two, the Buffs trail. Lubbock Christian by one. Badgett batting from the right side, the big 6'2 senior. Drives this one to the third baseman, Mendenzota bobbles it. Comes up throwing and in time to get Kennedy Badgett who was streaking down the line. Menden Zoda bobbled it, then came up with it. As Kennedy's retired 5-3 to three for out number one. And that'll bring up Adam Becker. Becker, the 6'4", 225-pound junior out of Midland. Big third baseman for WT, batting from the right side. Has a 418 batting average. His last at bat, he grounded out to the third baseman. Becker settles in, ready to go. Looks at a pitch outside and high for a ball. Eric Ortiz in the on deck circle. Ryan Johnson measuring his lead off of the bag at second base. Becker swings at this one, sends it to the WT dugout. That evens the count at one and one. Becker settles back in, batting from the right side. Open stance. Stevenson comes home with it. That does not break. That's down low for a ball. So two balls and a strike. Ryan Johnson measures his lead off the bag at second base. It's hit towards Mendezona, comes up on two hops, throws it over to first in time for the put out. It's a batter, Becker, for his first two at bats, is grounded out to Mendezona twice. And that's out number two, and that brings up Eric Ortiz. Ortiz, who flew out to left field his first at bat. Eric comes up with a 286 batting average. Junior batting from the left side, fouls this one off at the plate. And they wait a moment as they retrieve the foul ball and get it. Ortiz out of Puerto Rico in Palm Beach State. Looks at a pitch high on the outside for a ball. Should Ortiz get aboard, then Will Finning in the on deck circle. Ortiz looks at a pitch high once again outside for a ball. So two and one the count on the junior first baseman. Coast out in left field, playing in. That got the outside corner. 
That evens the count at two and two. Get two outs here in the bottom of the third inning. Ryan Johnson with a leadoff double. He's still there. It's high for a ball. So full count for Eric Ortiz. Ortiz settles back in, batting from the left side. Ty Stevenson takes a long look in at home. Now decides to come that way with it. Ortiz drills it down the first baseline, fouling out of play. So that keeps the count full. Ortiz, 6'3", 210-pound junior. Batting from the left side. Drives this one out into right field, and that one is going to go it over the right hand fielder head. Ryan Johnson will come home to tie this one up as Eric Ortiz goes in with a stand up double. And so we're tied at three here in the bottom of the third inning. As Ortiz with a nice swing on a full count just sends us out to right field. Trouble for Hernandez to catch up to it. Got by him and rolled back to the fence. And Ryan Johnson able to come around and score. So we're tied at three here in the bottom of the third inning. And that brings up Will Finning with Ortiz over at second base. Finning was hit by a pitch and came around to score in the second inning. Looks at a pitch low, and that gets away from the catcher, Gibson, and so heading down to third base is Ortiz. So one ball for Will Finning. Gibson gets the mask, puts it back on, and settles back behind the plate. Finning, even stance. Sends this one out to right field, or center field, excuse me, and Letha settles underneath and is able to pull that one in for the third out. So Finney gave it a ride, just got to the deepest part of the plate. So a fly out to center field for out number three, but the Buffs do get a run on two hits. There were no errors in the inning and one left on base. We have played three complete. We're tied at three as we head to the top of the fourth inning. We'll take a timeout. We'll do so and come back with the top of the fourth right after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. 80 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating many years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Oh, it's cooled off just a touch. We're down to 79 degrees now, and the wind has switched. It was out of the west, and you can see the American flag. It's just blowing straight out of the north now at about 17 miles an hour. And blowing in to the batters. And so for the top of the fourth inning in a 3-3 ball game, Cade Ward will lead things off for Lubbock Christian. Ward, who struck out his last at bat, takes a swing and comes up empty. As he, or I should say as he fouls that one off. Ward batting 300 on the season. Yeah. 
weekend. This is his 21st plate appearance. Batting from the right side. Keen sends that one outside for a ball. So it'll be Ward to lead things off, followed by Carson Ogilvie and Edgar Hernandez, the 6, 7, and 8 batters in the lineup for Lubbock Christian in a 3-3 ball game. 1-1 one, one pitch from Keen. Swung on, and that hurts. It fouled off the ankle. Going to let Cade walk around a minute. Ward, the first baseman today, as he was in game two yesterday, came in in relief of Luis Navarro. Ward settles back in, batting from the right side. Calls time, wants to reset just a moment. Isaac Keen working here in the fourth inning. He's allowed three runs on three hits. That evens the count at two and two. Is that ball just missed? So Kate settles in, two two count. Fouled off at the plate, keeps the count at two and two. Of course, Wilder Park, one of the nice ones around in the region. Of course, synthetic turf, the entire surface is synthetic. That's going to be low for a ball. So that runs the count for Ward full. Three balls and two strikes. Top of the fourth inning, 3-3 ball game between Lubbock Christian and West Texas A&M here at Wilder Park in Canyon on the campus of West Texas A&M University. That's hit right back up the middle for a base hit. So Ward is aboard with a single. That one he sends right back where the pitcher departed as Isaac Keene was falling off the hill. It went right back up the middle. And so Cade Ward is aboard. And that'll bring up Carson Ogilvy. We watch this again right back up the middle on right-handed pitcher where your trail leg is falling away. That's where the baseball went. So Ogilvy, who walked his last at bat, then was caught trying to steal second base. Batting from the right side, 330 batting average. Shows bunt. Looked like he wanted to try to bunt Ward over. But they call that ball one. Edgar Hernandez in the on deck circle. So Ogilvy shows bunt again, and that one is foul for a strike. So that evens the count at one apiece as Ward starts to trot back to first base. Inching closer to home, shows Bunn, pulls it back. And that's high for a ball. So two balls and a strike for the shortstop for Lubbock Christian. Southmore settles in, ready to go once again. Ogilvy pumps the elbow, ready to go. Again, high for a ball. So that runs the count to three balls and a strike. Let me see. 
Keane working here into the fourth inning. Keane ready to go. That's in there for a ball. Actually, outside corner looked like it was a strike, but the umpire says Ogilvy gets a free pass. His second walk of the ball game, so that has runners at first and second for Lubbock Christian. And that'll bring up Edgar Hernandez, who struck out his first at bat. Hernandez batting 239 on the season. Brings the infield in just a touch. Becker playing on the grass at third. Savoy just behind the bag at second. Madrid, same place, bunch shown. Here's a quick throw down to first, not in time. As Ogilvy is back. One thing you can say about Kennedy Badge. He has a strong arm behind home plate. As he fired that one down to Eric Ortiz. You don't want to stray too far from the base pass, and now time is called. So, quick conversation to make sure everybody's on the same page. As we look around at some of the action that's going on. Again, both Angelo and West Texas with similar top marks, 24 and 7 on the season, 22 and 9 is where Lubbock Christian is. Again, Texas A&M International leading Kingsville one to nothing. All the games started at one o'clock today in the Lone Star Conference. That's in the bottom of the fourth. Also, San Angelo State on the road leading in Austin over St. Edwards two to one. That also is in the middle of the fourth. Oklahoma Christian over Cameron nine to six. That's in the fourth. And Eastern New, Mes uh, Eastern New Mexico trails St. Mary's two to nothing. And UT Permian Basin and Arkansas Sport Fort Smith are tied at four. All these all in the fourth inning right now. So quick conversation, we're back to it. Hernandez looks at a pitch high. They appealed down to first base saying that he did not go around. So that's two balls for Edgar Hernandez. Ogilvy at first. Cade Ward at second base. Well, Ward got there and a single to lead off the inning, and then Ogilvy walked. Hernandez. Bit of an open stance, batting from the right side. Shows Bunt. Lays it down. And the throw to first base in time as Hernandez is retired on the sacrifice. He's retired one to three, four out number one. That advances everybody a base. So Ward now at third, Ogilvy at second. And that brings up Caden Hensley, who got a board on a walk and then forced out. And that's going to be it, I believe, for Isaac Keene as the buffs are going to go to the bullpen and make a pitching change. So Keene. Goes three and a third as he's still accountable for the two base runners, but so far has allowed three runs on four hits. He's walked two, struck out two, and he hit a batter. And so we'll have a pitching change, and with that, we'll take a timeout and be back right after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading-edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. 
We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shim and Dillon Group for your appointment today. Bud Light, proudly brewed in the heart of Texas. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do be the best. Jenkins Doors and Windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your neighborhood. We don't use false promises or gimmicks. We simply offer quality doors and windows at a fair price, and we stand behind every sale. Jenkins is family-owned and operated, and proudly continues the traditions of quality and excellence that started over 80 years ago. Call us at 372-4336 or stop by our showroom at 820 West 6th and let our knowledgeable staff help you pick out the perfect doors and windows for your home. So Colton Charm Home comes in, the junior left-hander from Enos, Montana, and played previously at Washington University. Charm Home, 6'1", 200-pound left-hander, will face Caden Hensley. He came in yesterday, pitched two one batter, which was Hensley, and then got him retired and left. Charn home, first pitch swinging is Hensley on to, that'll be an out as he is forced out at first base. But a run does come across as Cade Ward comes home. So that pushes Lubbock Christian back in front, four to three on the fielder's choice by Hensley. He's retired, four to three. And that's out number two. Carson Ogilvy advances to third base. And then we'll go to the top of the order, Eduardo Acosta. Acosta, who has flown out to right field and hit into a fielder's choice, his last at bat. Fouls this one off of the plate. So he's down in the count 0-1. Charn home with a record of 6-2 and two on the season. He's pitched in 20 and a third innings. He's allowed 23 hits. 19 runs, 15 of those earned. He's walked 8 and struck out 25. Charn home. Comes in, that's just a little low for a ball. So that runs the count to 1 and 1. Charn home, who, as you look from the center field view, is all the way on the right side of the pitching rubber. Toes it with his left foot. Looks in at his battery mate. Kennedy sends in the signal, and that one is swung on, hit towards the shortstop. Madrid on two hops over to first base in time for the putout. And so Acosta is retired 6-3 to three for out number three. But little bit Christian gets a run. They do so on one hit. No errors in the inning and one left on base. We have played three and a half, and Lubbock Christian leads us one four to three. We'll take a timeout, do so, and we'll be back with the bottom of the fourth right after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. When joints begin to fail, it's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physician Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. Days are 
built on mornings. And Whataburger is built on burgers. Mornings. Burgers. Morning burgers? Hmm. Yeah, all right. Good thing there's a burger made just for breakfast. Topped with breakfast. The limited time breakfast burger is back at Whataburger. Okay, Nine Appreciation Day continues here at Wilder Park. Quite a few folks have brought their four legged friends out here to enjoy the sunshine and enjoy an afternoon of baseball. Brought to you in part by the Amarillo SPCA. Of course, our game today also brought to you by MetaDrive Pharmacy. And for the Buffaloes, they'll send Nolan Kuhn right on cue. The dog barks just on cue. Nolan Kuhn to the plate. He looks to strike one. Kuhn, the designated hitter, popped up to the shortstop. His last at bat. Comes in with a 324 batting average. Ty Stevenson still on the hill, delivering. That pitch misses for a ball. Evens it at one and one. Stevenson out of Ingram, Texas. Pitch misses high for a ball. So two balls and a strike. Isaiah Madrid in the on-deck circle. Followed by Paul Whitman. So 7 8 9 to lead off here in the bottom of the fourth inning. 4 to 3, Lubbock Christian with the lead. That's inside, almost hits Coon. So that runs the count to 3 and 1. Wind still blowing in now from the north, so coming right at the batters. Anything hit to left field will be hampered by the wind. And that's where Kuhn goes out to left field. Acosta will adjust and circle around and pull that one in. So Kuhn flies out to left field for out number one. So the senior from El Paso, Isaiah Madrid, will make his way to the plate. He grounded out to the third baseman back in the second inning. Madrid batting 243 on the season. First pitch is low for a ball. Isaiah, 5'10", 165-pound senior, played at Western Texas College. So to pitch outside for a ball. So 2-0 and the count for the senior shortstop. Pleasant afternoon here at Wilder Park. That's drilled towards the shortstop on two hops. Ogilvy comes up throwing and Isaiah Madrid is retired by his counterpart 6-3 to for out number two. That'll bring up Paul Whitman. The six foot freshman out of Diggerheim, Germany. Matting from the left side. Paul singled his last at bat and then stole a base. Check swings there for a strike. Whitman with a 354 batting average at his 66 play appearance shows Bun and he gets down in the count 0 and 2 as they call that. Strike two. Ty Stevenson working here in the fourth inning. And that's strike three on the out inside corner as Paul Whitman is a strikeout victim. That's the first strike out of the ball game for Ty Stevenson. And so no runs for the Buffs on no hits, no errors, nobody on base. We have played four complete. Lovett Christian with a 4-3 to three lead over West Texas A&M. We'll take a timeout. We'll do so. And come back right after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. This is a walk-on athlete. They train longer, put their heart into the game. 
This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. For the taste of Louisiana. Walk on. We live for this. Well, Lone Star Conference Baseball, of course, continuing right here on the LSC Network. And, of course, the WT Buffaloes Conference Champs back in 2021. And right now lead the conference with Angelo State. Both have 24-7 and seven records, so they both are tied for the top spot. Both teams in action today right now. Buffs trailing Lubbock Christian 4-3 to three as we go to the top of the fifth. Wow. Angelo State was leading St. Edwards 2-1. to one. That was in the fourth a moment ago. We'll check some scores for you in just a little bit. George Mendezona leads things off for Lubbock Christian. Facing Colton Charnholm. And first pitch swinging sends that one fouling out of play. So Mendezona behind in the count 0-1. Charnholm working in his second inning of work. And the zona batting from the left side, facing the lefty. Charnholm comes way inside, that misses for a ball. Outfield shading toward right field with the left-handed batter, Mendezona. George, big open stance on the left side. Takes a cut, sends this one out to center field. Whitman will circle around and able to pull that one in. So Menzona is retired on a fly out to center field for round number one. That brings up Larry Letha, who has doubled back in the third and left stranded. He was hit by a pitch in the first and came around to score on Mason Donahoe's single. Letha batting from the right side with a 342 batting average. His first opportunity at Colton Charm home. First pitch is a strike in there. Good fastball. Good pop. Kennedy Badgett's glove. Charno checks the wristband on the pitch that Kennedy Badgett wants. Letha settles back in, ready to go, and that's fouled off and out of play. So Larry Letha down in the count 0 and 2, but as we witnessed in the four game set with WT. He seems to swing better with two strikes. So this is one our 15th plate appearance. Pitch is inside for a ball. So one ball and two strikes for the senior center fielder for Lubbock Christian. Again, Lubbock Christian, 13 seniors on this club. Quite a few juniors as well. It's an experienced team. That pitch misses down low for ball two. So two and two now for the senior out of Center Point, Texas. Letha batting from the right side, ready to go. Chart home as that sent down to. Adam Becker third. He throws out his throws out to Letha on a five to three put out. And that's two outs here in the fifth inning, top of the fifth. I'll bring up Mason Donahoe, the designated hitter who has 
singled and scored a run. He also lined out to the shortstop, Jose Madrid, back in the third inning. Batting from the left side, Donahoe looks at a strike. Donahoe, 5'11", 190 from Round Rock, played at Odessa College. Charnholm sets his feet on the rubber, ready to go. Outside that misses for a ball. So for Mason Donahoe, that evens the count of one and one. Again, sun splashed afternoon here at Wilder Park. Good crowd on hand to watch baseball. Good crowd across the way to our east for softball as that pitch is low for a ball. Lady Buffs in action as well. This sports complex, one of the nicer ones in the LFC. That is going to be a shot to the second base past our second baseman, Eddie Savoy, as Donahoe gets aboard with a single. So a two-out hit will bring Jared Gibson to the plate. Again, just staying with the pitch all the way, Donahoe drives it past the second baseman, Savoy, and out into right field. So Gibson will settle in, batting from the right side. Hit a home run back in the first, a two-run shot. Also grounded out to Savoy back in the third. Charnholm comes home, that's a strike. Gibson did not agree. Of course, he's the catcher for Lovett Christian and shook his head at the umpire in disagreement. Kennedy Badgett turns around and said, that was a good-looking pitch to me. So the 0-1 pitch is swung on, hit right at Savoy, gets it on a liner once again. And so Gibson lines out for out number three. So no runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. We have played four and a half. Lubbock Christian with a four to three lead over West Texas A&M. We'll take a timeout. We'll do so. Come back with the bottom of the fifth. The first this break on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. WT student athletes drink low-fat chocolate milk post-workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low-fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low-fat chocolate milk to your post-workout routine. Go Bucks! Again, Canine Appreciation Day, or I Love My Dog, whatever you want to call it. Everybody bringing their four-legged friends out here to walk and have some fun at Wilder Park. Across the way over at Schaefer Park, Lady Buffs lead Oklahoma Christian 5-3. That is in the top of the fifth. And for the Buffaloes here, as we start things off, here in the bottom of the fifth, Eddie Savoy looks at a strike. Pitches inside for a ball. So 1-1 one, one count on the WT second baseman. Savoy, who has singled and grounded out today. One for two. 
Looks at a pitch down low. That's ball two. Savoy out of Montreal, Quebec. Southmore second baseman ready. Sends this one out into left field. That's going to drop in for a base hit. So a leadoff single for Eddie Savoy. So he gets a board for Ryan Johnson. Again, just staying with the pitch all the way. Savoy takes Ty Stevenson's offering out to left field and watches that just fall over the third baseman's head for a hit. And he settles in at first base. So Ryan Johnson comes up. Batting from the right side, the left fielder looks at a strike. Johnson, who has had back-to-back -back doubles, one in the first and one in the third, came around to score in the third on Eric Ortiz double. Four to three, Lubbock Christian with the lead here in the bottom of the fifth inning. That pitch is outside for a ball. Johnson. Patting from the right side, settles in, ready to go. Again, outside for a ball. Let's see if there is action in the Lovey Christian bullpen. Just checking to see is Stevenson working here in the bottom of the fifth. Quick throw to first, the Savoy dives back. Really, Eddie did not have much of a lead at first. That's just a buy some time pitch over there. That gets by the catcher, and Savoy will head down to second base. So pass ball. Allowed Savoy to get to second. So Stevenson. Down on the count, three and one. And Johnson hits that to the third baseman, looks back, Savoy, and throws over to first. And so Ryan Johnson is retired by, his, by the third baseman, Mendenzona. Five to three for out number one. Kennedy Badgett comes up. He's grounded out to the shortstop and grounded out to third base today. He's 0 for 2 at the plate, 349 batting average. This is Kennedy's 110th plate appearance on the season. Badgett batting from the right side, open stance. Looks at a strike on the outside corner. Adam Becker in the on deck circle. See if Kennedy can break the streak for the three and four batters today. He takes a cut, comes up empty. So no two count on Kennedy Badgett, as both Kennedy and Adam have both grounded out. And they're two at bats today to the left side of the infield for Lubbock Christian. Badgett says this one right down the right field line and foul it out of play. Ty Stevenson working here in the fifth. He's allowed three runs on five hits. He's left three WT base runners stranded today. Turns around to get Eddie Savoy back to first or back to second base. Savoy, who had a decent lead off the bag at second. Savoy measures his lead. That's going to be high for a ball. So one ball and two strikes. 
to the senior catcher for WT. Badgett settles back in deep in the batter's box. Fouls this one off at the plate. Keeps the count at one and two. Lubbock Christian with a four to three lead in this one. Stevenson kind of laboring now, taking his time in between pitches. That's fouled off at the plate. Badgett stays alive. Again, we said action in the Lubbock Christian bullpen area. And actually, they just had a ball go out on the field. Stevenson ready to go. That's low for a ball. So Kennedy Badgett with a 2-2 count now. Badgett settles into the right side, getting beat back deep in the batter's box. Bit of an open stance. And that one is a strike on the inside corner, and Kennedy can't believe it. As he's a strikeout victim, and that's the second strikeout of the ball game for Ty Stevenson. That's out number two. And again, you can see that it comes way inside. Kennedy thought it was going to be a ball and got rung up by the umpire. And I'm sure they'll have a conversation when Kennedy comes back out because he thought that was way inside. So that brings Adam Becker to the plate. He is grounded out twice to his counterpart, George Mendezona at third base. First pitch is high for a ball. Should Adam get aboard, then Eric Ortiz in the on-deck circle. Becker settles in, ready to go, batting from the right side. Eddie Savoy still measuring his lead off the bag at second base. Stevenson with an off-speed pitch. Becker pulled the trigger but just couldn't slow the bat up enough to make contact. So that evens the count at one and one. Becker batting from the right side, settles in, ready to go. Drives this one out to left field, and that is going back, 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 and that one is right at the warning track. So Boy will come around to score, and Becker with a double, and that ties the ball game at four apiece. So Becker got a hold of that one, got it up in the wind, and again was battling. The wind is blowing in from left field, so you can watch the replay here as he just skied this one. Costa was trying to measure where it was going. Kind of got lost up in the air, and that hits the back wall. And Becker with a stand-up double at second base. So 4-4 four four is our score, and that's going to require a visit to the pitching mound. That may be all for Ty Stevenson. We'll wait and see. They're having a conversation right now. That's the pitching coach, that's not the head coach for Lubbock Christian. Nathan Blackwood allowing his staff to come out, visit with Ty Stevenson. They're giving, obviously, the bullpen some more time. There's two arms, I think, down in the bullpen that are warming up tell you that Angelo State and St. Edwards are now tied at two. And that's at the bottom of the fifth inning. So that's a game we're keeping an eye on here today. And again, WT Softball leading Oklahoma Christian five to three. 
That one's in the top of the sixth across the way. So Eric Ortiz comes up. Ortiz, who doubled his last at bat, looks at a pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Ortiz batting from the left side. The junior first baseman looking out at Ty Stevenson. Looking in, he's checking runner at second base. That one's way outside for a ball. Adam Becker measuring his lead off the bag at second. 4-4 ball game here in the bottom of the fifth. WT has not led in this contest, but they have worked their way back to tie it up. We were tied at three and then tied now at four. It's outside for a ball. Ty Stevenson, the senior, trying to get his first win of the year as he has two losses so far this season. This is his eighth start of the season. That is going to be a little dribbler out to left field, and Costa will settle underneath and pull that one in for the putout. Zortis flies out to left for out number three. So the Buffaloes do get a run on two hits. There were no errors in the inning and one left on base. We have played five complete. We're tied at four apiece. We'll take a timeout and be back at the top of the six right after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us, much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. The Texas Panhandle as a whole has been my home for as long as I can remember, and I want to be giving back to the community that made it home. WT's MBA program is ranked number four in the state of Texas now. Having the opportunity to come to a university like WT was a once in a lifetime opportunity. People really care about your success here and it feels like a family um, oriented university and I really appreciate that. Come apply at WT. Well, we get ready for the top of the sixth inning and it will be Cade Ward to lead things off for Lovett Christian in a 4-4 ball game. Cade Ward followed by Carson Ogilvy and Edgar Hernandez as Ward makes his way to the plate. Ward today has singled and struck out. He singled back in the fourth and came around to score. And so when Ward is leading off, he bats 750. He has a 333 batting average, but when he leads off, he's batting 750. First pitch is a strike from Charnholm. Colton working here in his third inning of work. So far, he's allowed one hit, and that was to Cade Ward. Charnholm, the left hander. Got Ward swinging on that one. He was out in front. So good breaking ball. So no two count for Cade Ward. Top of the sixth. A 4-4 ball game here at Wilder Park. Love it, Christian's first baseman. Looks at a pitch high for a ball. Ward, a senior, he was one of the ones I heard yesterday talking with actually a WT student about how 13 seniors have stayed here with Lubbock Christian. Got that extra year, a lot of them, because of the COVID year, so they all stayed to play. Pitches down low for a ball. So Ward getting an opportunity today and in last night's nightcap ball game. 2-2 pitch from Colton Charm home on the way. 
It's drilled down the third baseline, fouling out of play. So it keeps the count at two and two on Cade Ward. Ward out of Fort Worth. Also played at the University of New Mexico before transferring to Lubbock Christian. Drives this one down to third. Coming up and throwing Adam Becker, and Ward is retired, five to three. A nice play by Adam Becker. So he is the first out here in the top of the sixth. That brings up Carson Ogilvy. Ogilvy has walked twice in this ball game. The second inning, he tried to steal second, was caught stealing by Kennedy Badgett. In the fourth inning, he was left stranded at third base. So Carson Ogilvy settles in, ready to go. 5'10", sophomore out of Spring, Texas. Looks at a strike. So Charnholm checks the wristband once again, gets ready to come home with it. That's another strike. Good fastball. Wasn't what Carson Ogilvy was looking for. You could tell as it came in, he was looking for something different. So he's down in the count 0 and 2. Chokes up just a touch. Itches a little closer to home plate to protect the dish. That's going to be high for a ball. So one ball and two strikes for Ogilvy. Edgar Hernandez in the on-deck circle. So 6, 7, and 8 to lead things off here in the top of the 6th. It's fouled off at the plate and out of play. Keeps the count at 1 and 2. Ogilvy settles in from the right side, inches a little closer up in the batter's box, a little closer toward home plate, and just kind of got hit on the hands over to Savoy, quickly over to first, and he's safe. As uh, kind of took a bad hop, Savoy had to adjust, and then he was throwing over to Eric Ortiz and just made a low throw that Ortiz couldn't come up with. As we watch on the replay again, it just kind of took a weird hop, and Savoy had a hurry because of the speed of Carson Ogilvy. So Ogilvy aboard with a hit. And that brings up Edgar Hernandez. Brings the infield in just a bit. This is hit out to right field. Will Finning circles around, loves that one, and gets it back in. So Hernandez is out on a fly out to right field for out number two. And that'll bring up Caden Hensley. Hensley, who has walked and hit into a fielder's choice back in the fourth. Hensley batting 303 at the plate. His 90th plate appearance this season. Charnholm, good pitch on the inside part of the plate for a strike. Again, if you believe you hear some dogs in the background, that's because there are. They're all out here for K-9 Appreciation Day today. Swinging and empty. Hensley's down in the count 0 and 2. Char home. Came on in the fourth inning in his third inning of work. 
So he cleaned up the fourth, pitched in the fifth, and now pitching here in the sixth. It's golfed out of bounds along the left field line on a foul ball. Still an 0-2 count for Charn or for Hensley on facing Charn home. It's just closer to home plate. Chokes up a little on the bat. That's going to be outside for a ball. So one ball and two strikes for Caden Hensley. Lubbock. Played at Midland College, 5'10", 175-pound junior. The second baseman for Lubbock Christian. That's outside for a ball. Same exact location. Runs the count to 2-2. Two and two. So Hensley settles back in, batting from the left side. 4-4 ball game, top of the sixth. Runner at first base is Carson Ogilvy. And that pitch misses outside, runs the count full. So a 3-2 count for Caden Hensley. Charnholm looking for his first strikeout. And that's hit right back to him. And he will underhand over to first base to Ortiz. And Hensley is retired. One to three for out number three. No runs on one hit. There were no errors and, no, and one left on base. We have played five and a half. We're tied at four. We go to the bottom of the sixth. We'll come back with that for you right after this time out on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. So a new pitcher for Lubbock Christian is Cannon Davis comes out, and he'll get an opportunity to pitch on in relief of Ty Stevenson. Cannon Davis, a senior, 6'2", 210 pounds, out of College Station. He pitched previously at the University of Texas in Rio Grande Valley. And he comes in with a 1-1 one one record on the season. And that'll bring Will Finning to the plate to start things off here in the bottom of the sixth. Ty Stevenson goes five innings, allowed four hits, or four runs, I should say, on six hits. Will Fenning's first pitch is outside for a ball. Cannon Davis has three saves on the season for Lubbock Christian. This is fouled off at the plate. He was the count of one and one. Davis.
Davis has a one and one record, three saves. He's pitched in 13 innings. He's allowed 10 runs, all of them earned. He's walked six and struck out 12. Right hander. A college station that pitches high for a ball. Davis on in relief of Ty Stevenson. As we go to the top of the, or the bottom of the sixth. That's high for a ball. So Finning runs the count three balls and a strike. Finning has flown out and has been hit by a pitch. Pops this one out to right field. And that one is gone. Will Finning got that one up in the air. And Finning connects on a home run. As he got that one to right field and launched it. And the Buffs take their first lead of the afternoon thanks to Will Finning on a solo home run as WT now leads this one. Five to four, and you watch as he just stroked that one and it just kept going up and up and up and over the fence as Edgar Hernandez kept running back and thought he still had some real estate, but not the case. So Cannon Davis. Gets a strike in there for Nolan Kuhn. Cole Kuhn doesn't agree. Circles back to the umpire. So no one pitch on Nolan Kuhn. Fouls this one off at the plate. So now Nolan down in the count 0 and 2. Kuhn who Played at Connor State before transferring to WT. The sophomore DH settles in, ready to go, batting from the left side. Cannon Davis throws that outside for a ball. Again, a nice crowd on hand. The SPCA out in between innings showing some adoptable Dogs, if somebody so wants one, as that's fouled off at the plate. They have a tent set up down the first base line. So anybody wanting to adopt can do so today. Jacob Griffith, our director, is wanting to get one as soon as the game's over today. That's high for a ball. That evens the count at two and two. Buffs lead it five to four thanks to Will Finning on his solo home run to lead off this inning. Isaiah Madrid in the on deck circle for the Buffs. That is drilled down the left right field line, fouling out of play. Keeps the count at two and two for Nolan Kuhn. Kuhn. Settles back in, ready to go. Nolan batting 316 on the season. It's his 39th plate appearance. Reaches for that one and fouls it off out of play. Keeps the count at two and two. So Kuhn settles back in. Batting from the left side. A good off-speed trick pitch for Connor Davis. Had Kuhn out in front. He was expecting it to be a little quicker. And he is a strikeout victim for out number one. And again, you can see he's just out in front of that pitch. He just kind of broke at the very end, too, and dropped off the planet. So Davis has his first strikeout. That brings up Isaiah Madrid. Isaiah has grinded out to the third baseman and the shortstop today. He's 0 for 2 at the plate. Isaiah batting 239, looks at strike one. Paul Whitman in the on deck circle for the buffs. 
Madrid been in Oakland stance. Back at the outside corner, they appeal down to first base and say that he did not go around. So that evens the count in one and one. Senior shortstop settles back in, batting from the right side. Looks at a pitch low for ball two. Madrid works his way back into the batter's box. And misses outside for ball three. So three balls and a strike for the senior shortstop for WT. Again, West Texas leads this one 5-4 here in the bottom of the sixth. First lead of the ball game, thanks to Will Finning's solo home run to lead off this inning. Madrid leans into that one, sends it fouling out of play. Isaiah settles back in. 3-1 count, 3-2 count, excuse me. It is a full count now. Fell that one off at the plate. So the 3-2 pitch from Connor Davis. That one's fouled off. Cannon out of College Station. Outfield playing pretty much straight away for Isaiah Madrid. Again, the wind is kind of swirling a bit. But coming in from left field, that's it. Right back up the middle, and Isaiah Madrid has his first base hit of the ball game as he gets aboard on a single. That'll bring Paul Whitman to the plate. With one out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And again, you watch, just stays with that, drives it right up the middle. Nice hit for, no, for Isaiah Madrid. So Paul Whitman, who has singled and stolen a base in the second inning and has struck out in the fourth, settles in, batting from the left side. 348 batting average, runner off with the first pitch. That's down the left field line, fouling out of play. So a strike for Paul Whitman as Zay Madrid was off with the pitch. Kenneth Davis gets a new baseball, settles in, ready to go. Whitman ready, batting from the left side. Drives this one to the shortstop, goes up high to pull that one in. Man, that was a nice athletic play by Ogilvy as he had to go up, and it was one of those he wasn't sure if he got it or enough, and Whitman just needed a little more to get that up in the air as he lines out to the shortstop for round number two. And you watch the hit right here. And Ogilvy goes high to pull that one in and, again, had a little more lift for Whitman. He'd be on base right now. Brings up Eddie Savoy. First pitch down in the dirt to Eddie. So one ball for the second baseman for the Buffs. Sophomore settles in, ready to go, batting from the right side. Madrid measures his lead off the bag. That's going to be low for a ball. So 2-0 and the count. So Davis's pitch swung on, fouled off out of play. Runs the count to two balls and a strike. Matt Vandenberg flashing signals in from the dugout for his runner at first base. That's Isaiah Madrid. That pitch is inside for a ball. So Savoy runs the count to three balls and a strike. Should he get aboard, Ryan Johnson in the on-deck circle. Savoy fouls that off at the plate. So that runs the count full. 
three balls and two strikes. So new baseball for a Cannon Davis. So boy settles back in ready to go to face the right hander. Madrid off with the pitch and that one oh just goes foul lines curls foul. That was a nice pitch that Savoy kind of went with. Had he kept that fair, I think Madrid would have come around to score. He was off quickly off the base pass. First baseman, Cade Ward playing back. That's down the right field line, fouling out of play. So that's allowing Madrid to get a bigger lead than normal. Madrid checks where Cade Ward's playing just to make sure he's quicker than Cade is getting back to first base. Eddie Savoy ready for the full count offering. And that is low for ball four. So Savoy will take the walk. First one for Cade Dave. First one for Lubbock Christian pitching today. That brings Ryan Johnson to the plate. He is two for three today. Two doubles, the first and third inning, and he came around to score. And then grounded out to the third baseman back in the fifth. Johnson batting from the right side, settles in. A 440 batting average for the junior. Check swing. That's low for a ball. Johnson out of Albuquerque. 5'11", 200-pound junior, ready. Sends this one out to center field, and that is going to be right at Letha. And he doesn't have to move much to pull that one in. But the Buffs do get a run. That on Will Finning's solo home run. So one run on two hits. There were two left on base, no errors in the inning. And we have played six complete. Buffaloes with their first lead of the ball game. They lead this one six to five. We'll take a timeout, be back after this on the Low Star Conference Digital Network. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. Well, welcome back as we go to the top of the seventh inning. And again, look at the crowd and, and you look at the dogs that are out here for this one. And we had a fan come up and ask us to play George Jones' Old Red. We just don't control the music. We'll see what they can do. But nevertheless, Eduardo Acosta will lead things off here in the top of the seventh. Five to four, WT on top. First lead of the ball game. Colton Charnholm comes out for another inning of work, and he'll face Edward Eddie Acosta. First pitch swinging, fouls that off and out of play. So Acosta down in the count, 0 and 1. Lubbock Christian, four runs on six hits. They've committed one error. And they've left five on base. WT, five runs on eight hits. They've committed an error. And that one is sent skyward. 
Circling underneath it, Paul Whitman will pull that one in for and out as Acosta flies out to center field for out number one. That brings up George Mendezona. Mendezona has grounded out twice today, once to the pitcher and once to the first baseman. He's also flown out to center field. Mendezona with a 369 batting average settles in to bat from the left side. Charn home. There's a breaking ball that just won't curve there, so that's way inside for a ball. Larry Letha in the on-deck circle for Lubbock Christian. Line shot past Eddie Savoy. That'll be in for a base hit for Mendezona. So he gets aboard with a single with one out. Again, staying with the pitch that time. Mendezona, you can watch, he just stays with it all the way and sends it past the second baseman. Larry Latha comes up. He was hit by a pitch in the first and scored. He doubled in the third and grounded out to the third baseman back in the fifth. Latha settles in, facing Charm home once again. First pitch swinging, sends that out to right field for a base hit. Here's the relay in from Will Finning. Right, a great shot to third base to Adam Becker on one hop. So that keeps Mendezona at second base. So back-to-back -back hits. Larry Latha with a single. That brings up Mason Donahoe, who has two hits in this ball game today. He is two for three at the plate, lined down to the shortstop back in the third. Donahoe settles in, ready to go. The 360 batting average, again batting from the left side, facing Charnholm, pops this one up, and that's going to be a foul ball. So no one count on the designated hitter for Lubbock Christian. Donahoe settles back in, ready to go, batting from the left side. Open stance. That's going to be low for a ball. So that evens the count at one and one. Jared Gibson in the on-deck circle for Lovey Christian. Charn home checks the wristband, gets the pitch. There's a little bit of action in the WT bullpen area. That's low for a ball. So two balls and a strike for Donahoe. A junior out of Round Rock, Texas, played at Odessa College. We got a strike on the outside corner. Knew it, kind of shook his head, yes, when he heard the umpire ringing him up. So that evens the count at two and two. That one just misses a little low. Runs the count full. Three balls and two strikes as there's now a lot of action heading down to the WT bullpen. Charn home who came in in the fourth. Pitching here in the seventh. Checks the runner at second base. Comes home with it and that is going to be a base hit. Hit out to left field. Here's the relay in. Nice job by the WT defense to keep that one in front. That loads the bases, so Mason Donahoe with a single. So three singles in a row here has loaded the bases for Lemon Christian here in the top of the seventh inning. You watch this hit right here, but nice play 
Ryan Johnson who comes in, grabs that up, and gets it into the infield quickly. That does not allow George Mendezona to come in and score. So Mendezona at third, Latha at second, and now Donahoe at first. Charnholm facing Jared Gibson, who lined down to the second baseman, his last at bat, that way inside for a ball. And action just beginning in earnest in the WT bullpen, so quick timeout taken by WT. As pitching coach Hall wants to come out and visit with Charnholm and give his bullpen a little bit more action out there. Checking around the Lone Star Conference. Lady Buffs now trailing Oklahoma Christian 8-5. to five. That one's through 7. And so that may even be a final. We'll check and see just to make sure on that one. As the fans are coming out of Schaefer Park, so we believe that is the final. Oklahoma Christian wins that one 8-5. to five. Angelo and St. Edwards are in the top of the seventh. They're tied in a 3-3 ball game. And again, Buffs and Angelo State are tied with identical 24-7 and seven records to lead the Lone Star Conference. Lubbock Christian is in third, 22-9. and nine. So after a conversation, Charn home, ready for the second pitch to Jared Gibson. He's behind in the count, 1-0. Checks the wristband, makes sure. He and Kennedy Badgett are on the same page. It's in there for a strike. So one ball and one strike for Jared Gibson. Gibson batting from the right side. Settles in, ready to go. That is way inside for a ball. Gibson, the sophomore out of Lubbock. Played at Midland College, 6'2", 235 pounds. 336 batting average on the season. Gibson with a... Even stance, that is inside for a ball. So that runs the count to three and one. Charnholm again checks the wristband. He's got the bases full and only one out here in the top of the seventh inning. This is when you'd love a double play. Fouled off at the plate. So for Jared Gibson, that gets the count full of three balls and two strikes. Gibson settles back in, ready to go. Takes a swing and strikes out that on the inside part of the play. Gibson is retired for round number two. Big strikeout for Colton Charnholm. That's his first strikeout of the ball game. It came on the inside part of the play, and Gibson could not hold back. So that brings up Cade Ward, first pitch, a strike on the inside part of the plate. It's one of those that kind of buckles the knees. You trying to get out of the way, you think it's too much inside and ends up being a strike. Charnhold digging deep here, trying to get out of this bases loaded jam. Two outs now in the inning. That's fouled off down the third base line. So Charnholm ahead in the count, 0-2. 
to Cade Ward, who grounded out to third base his last at bat, singled and scored back in the fourth and struck out in the first. Charnholm ready to go. And struck him out. Wow, what a nice pitch. As back-to-back -back strikeouts preserves the Buffs' lead, 5-4 to four over Lubbock Christian. No runs on three hits. There were no errors and three left on base. We have played six and a half. The Buffs lead this one five to four. We'll take a timeout. We'll do so. Come back for the bottom of the seventh, but first this break on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades, Contact Shimon Dill Group for your appointment today. Bud Light, proudly brewed. But we go to the bottom of the seventh inning in a five to four ball game, WT in front. Kennedy Badgett will lead things off here in the bottom of the seventh. That was seventh inning stretch. Nobody stood but me and stretched. Shows bunt, pulls the bat back. That's ball one. Badgett on the day is struck out and grounded out twice. He's 0 for 3 at the plate. His batting average dropped to 345. His 111th plate appearance. Swings at that one and fouls it off out of play. Facing Connor Davis for the first time. Conan, Cannon Davis, excuse me. Cannon Davis for the first time. Cannon settles in, ready to go. Badgett also ready to go. Fouls this one off. Now behind in the count, one and two. After Badgett will be Adam Becker and Eric Ortiz, the three, four, and five batters in the WT lineup today. Buffs lead this one five to four. That's fouled out of play. Keeps the count at one and two. Kennedy batting from the right side. Had some fun yesterday as junior college coach at Lamar Community College was here to watch him play. Golfs that one down the right field line, fouling out of play. Keeps the count at one and two. Cannon Davis working in his second inning of work. Again, sending that foul down the right field line and out of play. Badgett. Slowly works his way back into the batter's box, batting for the right side. Cannon Davis gets the set that Jerry Gibson wants. Comes home with it. And that's drilled up the middle for a base hit. As Kennedy Badgett has his first hit of the ball game. Solid single. Puts the catcher on first base. That will bring up Adam Becker, who has grounded out to third twice. And hit a double his last at bat. And that double brought in Eddie Savoy. That tied the ball game at four. 
And Will Finning, of course, hit the solo home run in the sixth to give the Buffs the lead. Five to four. That's going to be down low for a ball. Becker with a 419 batting average, batting from the right side. Settles in, ready to go. Big third baseman. Set a pitch a little low for a ball. So 2 0 the count. Outfield pretty much straight away for Adam Becker. Wind still coming out of the north, but not as strong as it was earlier. That misses for a ball, ball three. Again, 81 was our game time tip. Just a pleasant afternoon, K-9 Appreciation Day today. Emerald SPCA is here having some friends you can adopt if you want to. That's going to be outside for ball four. So four straight pitches sends Adam Becker to first base. First walk given up by, or second walk by Cannon Davis, I should say. That brings up Eric Ortiz. Before that, though, quick conversation. Runners at first and second, and we may have a pitching change, and we will have a pitching change for Lubbock Christian. That's going to be all for Cannon Davis as he'll head back to the locker room. We'll take a timeout. We'll do so and be back with our pitching change. But first, this break on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading-edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shimon Dillon Group for your appointment today. Bud Light, proudly brewed. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Jenkins Doors and Windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your neighborhood. We don't use false promises or gimmicks. We simply offer quality doors and windows at a fair price, and we stand behind every sale. Jenkins is family-owned and operated, and proudly continues the traditions of quality and excellence that started over 80 years ago. Call us at 372-4336 or stop by our showroom at 820 West 6th and let our knowledgeable staff help you pick out the perfect doors and windows for your home. So we're ready to go with the pitching change. And for the Buffaloes, Will Finning lays down a bunt, and that's going to be foul. Excuse me, Eric Ortiz lays down a bunt, and that's going to be foul. So the new pitcher for Lubbock Christian, Colton Brown. Colton with a 4-0 and record this season, 10 and two-thirds innings. He's allowed 14 hits, 10 runs, 7 of those earns. He walked 10, struck out 13. Brown, a sophomore out of Lubbock, played at Howard College. Ortiz shows bunt once again. And spins around. Kennedy, Badgett back to second base. Badgett on at second. Adam Becker over at first. No outs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Ortiz 
Again, shows bunt. Fouls that one off at the plate. So Ortiz down in the count 0 and 2. <laughs> Ortiz batting from the left side, 289 batting average. That's high for a ball. Buffs lead it 5 to 4 here, bottom of the seventh. Abilene, or excuse me, Angelo State in St. Edwards tied at four in the seventh in their ball game. It's outside for ball two. Lady Buffs lost Oklahoma Christian eight to five in their first game. Ortiz. Drives this one out into right field. And it'll be a single going to hold up Badgett. Well, now the ball was bobbled, and so Badgett comes home. <laughs> and Kennedy Badgett enjoying the fact that he scored on that play. They held him up originally, and then when it was bobbled by Hernandez in right field, that allowed for Badgett to come home. And again, nice hit by Ortiz out to right field. Then it was mishandled by Hernandez. And that allowed for Kennedy Badgett to come home to give the Buffs a two-run lead here in the seventh. They lead it six to four. And that brings Will Finning to the plate. So Adam Beckert's at second base. Eric Ortiz at first. And Will Finning, who had a solo home run, his last at bat. To give the Buffs the lead, five to four. At that point, shows Bunt, pulls the bat back. Ball one. Finning checks the play sheet that all the players carry as well. Sticks it in his back pocket. Junior takes a swing, comes up empty. Evens the count at one and one. Becker at second, Ortiz at first. Buffs lead at six to four here in the bottom of the seventh. Finning settles back in, batting from the right side. 347 at the plate this season for the junior. Shows bunt. Offered it up, so that's going to be a strike. So one ball, and two strikes to Will Finning. Finning out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Batting from the right side. Looks at a pitch high for a ball. So Finning, Finning hit by a pitch in the second inning, came around to score the second run of the ball game for the Buffs. Fly out to center field and then hit that home run back in the sixth. Finning golfs this one down the right field line and out of play. Keeps the count at two and two. So Fenning settles back in, ready to go. Becker takes his short lead off the bag at second. That misses outside for a ball. So three balls and two strikes. The count is full for Will Fenning. Check swing for Finning. It's bounced in front. Quick throw to first base as he's retired, but he does advance the base runners. 
So Fenning becomes the first out here in the inning as he has retired two to three for out number one. And Becker moves over to third, Ortiz over at second. That brings up Nolan Kuhn, who has struck out, popped up, and flied out today, 0 for 3 at the plate. Kuhn out of Yukon, Oklahoma, settles in the bat from the left side. So two outs in the inning, or excuse me, one out in the inning. Kuhn drives that one down the first baseline, fouling out of play. Kuhn just wants to get a hold of one and get it up in the air. Like to play another run for the Buffs. Becker at third, Ortiz at second. Colton Brown has that one fouled off at the plate by Kuhn. So Colton Brown ahead in the count, 0-2. Kuhn up set with himself. I think he didn't feel like he got it all the way around on that one. And that was a pitch he felt like he could drive. So the 0-2 count from Colton Brown, a right-hander. Kuhn calls time and steps out. Brown, the sophomore out of Lubbock. There's a line shot that's out into left center field for Kuhn. One run comes across, another run comes across, and Nolan Kuhn slides into second base with a stand-up double. And drives in two. And so coming around to score, Adam Becker. Also coming around to score, Eric Ortiz. And again, a great shot out over the shortstop's head. And Becker comes in to score. Ortiz rounds third, and he aches his way into score. Gives the Buffs an 8-4 to four lead with one out. And that brings up Isaiah Madrid, who singled his last at bat. Nolan Kuhn over at second base. Madrid checks swing, fouls that one off at the plate. So we're going to have a pitch runner on now for Madrid. We get a run for the post for 44, Brian Bailey. So Brian Bailey will come in to pitch run for Isaiah Madrid. Check it, sorry, for Nolan Kuhn. Isaiah Madrid is at the plate. So... Bailey comes in to pitch a run. Madrid sends it towards shortstop. Throws over to first in time and Bailey slides into third base. So Madrid is out 6-3 to three for out number two. That brings up Paul Whitman. So Whitman battles from the left side. Paul, who lined out to the shortstop his last at bat, struck out and singled back in the second, shows bunt. Trying to look at a squeeze there momentarily. Buffs lead this one 8-4. to four. They've scored three runs here in the bottom of the seventh. That's inside for a ball. Whitman, freshman center fielder, settles in ready to go, facing Colton Brown. Sends that one up over the middle, and running it down is the second baseman, but not in time as Whitman is safe with a single and drives in a run. That's his second RBI of the ball game. 
as Ryan Bailey comes around to score to give the Buffs a 9-4 to four lead. That brings up the top of the order, Eddie Savoy. He's the eighth batter here in the inning for the Buffs. Savoy batting from the right side. Whitman's off with the pitch. As he slides in safely at second base, gets a stolen base. It's his second stolen base of the ball game. As Whitman off with the pitch. And you can watch this one. Kind of a high inside pitch, but again, way ahead of the pitch. Whitman slides into the bag, and now there is for Savoy. Ball two. So Savoy ahead in the count. That's low for ball three. So Savoy be taking on this pitch from Colton Brown. That's low for a ball, so Savoy walks. He back to back walks. It's put Savoy on base. Seven runners at first and second for the Buffs and brings up the ninth batter in the inning, Ryan Johnson. Johnson today batting 437. He has two doubles. He's flown out to center field and he's grounded out to third base today. Two for four at the plate. Johnson settles in, batting from the right side. Runners at first and second. And there's a strike on the outside corner. Johnson out of Albuquerque. Has that even stance. Outfield straight away. Sends this one out to right field, giving Chase Hernandez and... That is a foul ball, man. That was right down the line. So Johnson with a long strike. He was already at second base. Thought that was going to be another double. Since Paul Winman back to second, he had come around to score. And Eddie Savoy back from third to first. So everybody got their exercise in on that run. two count and reaching for that one sending it to the second baseman coming up Hensley throws out Ryan Johnson four to three for out number three but the Buffaloes get four runs on four hits there was one error in the inning and two runners left on base we have played seven complete WT with a nine to four lead over Lovey Christian. We'll take a timeout, be back for the top of the eighth, but first this break on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. WT student athletes drink low fat chocolate milk post workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low-fat chocolate milk to your post-workout routine. Go Buffs! Well, as we come back and go to the top of the eighth inning, Buffaloes lead this one a little more comfortably now, 9-4 to four after scoring four runs back in the bottom of the seventh. 
And they bring in Chris Rodriguez on in relief of Colton Charnholm. Charnholm did such a great job, especially striking out the last two he faced to get out of a bases-loaded jam in the seventh inning. And Chris Rodriguez, 6'3", 230-pound junior from El Paso, Texas, comes in. Has a record of 1-0 in the season. He has three saves, 16 and two-thirds innings. He's allowed... 12 hits. Three runs have been scored on him. All three have been earned. He's walked eight and struck out 20. So Rodriguez gets set to face Carson Ogilvie, Edgar Hernandez, and Caden Hensley. Seven, eight, nine batters in the lineup for Lubbock Christian here in the top of the eighth inning. Ogilvy, who singled his last at bat and walked twice, looks at a strike. Rodriguez, a hard throwing right hander. It's a little high for a ball. Ogilvy batting 337 on the season. It's a strike on the outside corner. So one ball and two strikes for the shortstop for Lubbock Christian. Sophomore settles back in, batting from the right side. High for ball two. Two and two the count. Settles in. Rodriguez pitch a little high, runs the count full at three and two. Chris likes to come in front of the plate, gets the signal from Kennedy Badgett, then circles back around as he looks with the wristband on to the top of the rubber. And that looked like strike three, but was not the case. The umpire said that was a ball four, so Ogilvy for the third time in the ball game walks to first. So that brings up the senior right fielder, Edgar Hernandez, who has struck out. He's also flowed out to right field and grounded out to the pitcher. So he's 0 for 3 today. Edgar batting from the right side. Set a ball. Chris Rodriguez gets the pitch set in from Kennedy Badgett. Now we'll work his way back to the top of the hill. Hernandez is ready. That's going to be high for ball two. In a sun splashed afternoon here at Wilder Park, Canyon, Texas. Wind coming in out of the north. That misses high for ball three. I think Rodriguez is frustrated a little bit as he's taking a long look. He, he thinks those pitches are right there, and that's going to bring Coach Hall out to visit with him real quick. So a quick conversation out on the hill as we look at what else is taking place in the LSC. Angelo State now jumped out to a 7-4 lead over St. Edwards in the bottom of the eighth. Arkansas Fort Smith loses to UTPB 11-4, or they're losing to them. This is in the eighth. Eastern New Mexico trailing St. Mary's 9 to 5. And Oklahoma Christian leads Cameron 23 to 10. That's in the top of the 7th inning. Some of the action going on around the league. 
Here it's 9-4, to four, WT with the lead over Lubbock Christian. 3-0 count for Edgar Hernandez as Chris Rodriguez has a visit from WT Pitching Coach Hall. Again, they send several players down to the bullpen area. There's a strike. Hernandez thought he could start walking to first base, but instead got called back. Kane Hensley in the on-deck circle. Carson Ogilvy over at first base. He got on via the walk. This one's popped up. And it's back toward the fence. And instead it's going to come over behind us. And so that runs the count full at three and two. Good effort by Kennedy Badgett to come back. Looking to see if that one was going to come down to him, but instead flew out with that wind again out of the north. Kind of just took it with it. Back over behind us. So 3-2 pitch is popped up. And see Madrid and Becker are both calling for it, but Madrid, as he pulls that one in, So that records an out, and that's out number one as Edgar Hernandez is retired. And a pop-up to the shortstop. So that's the first out here in the eighth inning. That brings up Caden Hensley to the plate. Hensley batting from the left side, looks at a strike. Carson Ogilvy still over at first base. One out here in the top of the eighth. And that came inside, and I think that was off of the knee pad of Kennedy Badgett. So that Was, I guess fouled off at the plate is what they're saying now. So that is a strike. So 0-2 on Caden Hensley. Wasn't sure if he went around or that came in and just hit the knee pad for Kennedy Badgett. So an 0-2 count for Hensley. That gets away from Badgett. He runs it down. So a 1-2 count. Hensley betting 300 on the season. Has driven in a run today. And that one just misses outside. Two and two. I think that's when Kennedy says, yeah, I got called out on a strike for that same pitch. So Hensley two and two. Eduardo Acosta in the on-deck circle for Lovey Christian. It's going to be sent towards the shortstop on the second in time for one. Over to first. Not in time. As Hensley able to beat him out. And so Ogilvy is retired 6-4. to four. Round number two. Hensley is on on a fielder's choice over at first base. That brings up Eduardo Acosta. Costa, who flew out to center field in the seventh for the first out, also grounded out to the shortstop back in the fourth, got a board on a fielder's choice, and flew out to right field to begin the ball game. Set a pitch in the inside part of the plate that's a ball. Kennedy Badgett with a lot of hand signals over to the dugout on what pitch they want. Costa battles in, back ready to go. Strike on the inside part of the plate. So that evens the count at one and one. 
which it sends in the pitch. Chris Hernandez checks the wristband, then works his way back to the top of the pitching rubber. Big right-hander ready to go. That's going to be low for a ball. Costa settles in ready. Fouls this one off and out of play. So Costa with a 2 2 count. Two outs here in the top of the eighth. Buffs lead it 9 4. Chris Hernandez. That's fouled off at the plate. Keeps the count even at two and two. Of course, the Buffs after this series head to Angelo State for an important matchup next weekend down in San Angelo. That off-speed pitch is hammered out into left field. And Johnson gives chase, circles underneath, and put, pulls it in for the putout. Again, hit into the wind. As Acosta hammered that one, but he flies out to left field. For out number three, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one runner left on base. We have played seven and a half. The Buffs lead it nine to four. We'll take a timeout. We'll do so and come back for the bottom of the eighth right after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us, much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. The Texas Panhandle as a whole has been my home for as long as I can remember, and I want to be giving back to the community that made it home. WT's MBA program is ranked number four in the state of Texas now. Having the opportunity to come to a university like WT was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. People really care about your success here, and it feels like a family-oriented um, university, and I really appreciate that. Come apply at WT. Great shots of the crowd here today at Wilder Park. Buffs lead this one 9-4 to four over Lubbock Christian. As Lubbock Christian scored three in the first. They took a 3-1 to one lead over the Buffaloes. WT answers back with a run in the bottom of the second and the bottom of the third to tie it up at three. Lubbock Christian takes the lead in the fourth, 4-3 four to three over WT. And then WT answers with a run in the bottom of the fifth and then takes the lead in the bottom of the sixth. Then they add four in the bottom of the seventh to have this 9-4 to four lead over Lubbock Christian. Kennedy Badgett will lead things off here in the bottom of the eighth inning, just as he did the bottom of the seventh. And his single kind of ignited the Buffs offense there in the seventh inning. As they scored four runs on four hits. They lead this one 9-4 to four over Lubbock Christian. Badgett to lead it off here. First pitch inside for a ball. Badgett to be followed by Adam Becker and Eric Ortiz, the 3, 4, and 5 batters in the lineup. Just as they did in the last inning, facing Colton Brown. That's drilled to the first baseman as Cade Ward able to get a glove on that. And so Badgett lines out the first for round number one. That brings up Adam Becker, who walked his last at bat and came around to score. Also had a double, and he's grounded out twice. He has one for three at the plate today. Becker... The 419 batting average.
Junior batting from the right side, takes a cut, and comes up empty on that off-speed pitch. Adam settles back in again, batting from the right side. Sends this one down the right field line, and that's going to be out of play. Becker from Midland, played for the University of Houston. Junior is down in the count 0-2. Again, Buffs lead this one 9-4 to to staying pace with Angelo State, who was leading St. Edwards last we checked. And that's going to be down in the dirt for a ball. So Becker settles back in, batting from the right side, open stance. Sends this one to the shortstop. Ogilvy comes up throwing to first. Two Ward in time for the 6-3 to three put out for out number two. And that'll bring up Eric Ortiz. Ortiz batting from the left side, settles in. 296 batting average. Ortiz has singled and doubled. He's also flown out to left field twice today. He's two for four to play. And first pitch swing sends that out to center field, giving chase. And no, neither one of those guys can get to it. They tried as Letha runs into Acosta and a stand up double for Eric Ortiz. They're going to go out and check on the outfielder. I mean, Acosta ran into Letha. And what a bit of a difference there as we watch the replay here. This one just got up in the air out into left center field, both giving chase. You can see Letha there, and then Ortiz comes into the picture, slides under him, and then that one got away. And so... Just kind of the difference, too. Larry Letha, a senior, 5'10", 195. Ortiz, as Eduardo on the season, is 5'10", 170. So the trainers are out there checking on him to make sure he's okay. Nice hit from Eric Ortiz, though. That has him at second base with two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. And Will Finning, when we come back to action, will be up at the plate. Ortiz is up, stretching out just a little bit. It's one of those two when you collide. It's, it's got cleats, got everything else going on. And so as we watch this one once again, again, Ortiz gets this up in the air. And Letha giving chase, and both of them probably calling for it. Costa tried to slide into the same spot. Then the ball goes on out to the fence, which that's allowing for Ortiz to advance on to second base. So they continue to check on Ortiz. Let's. Check in on the Lone Star Conference to see what's the latest. As Angelo won their first game. Again, they're playing two today because their second game was canceled yesterday, I guess, because of conditions that took whatever was taking place down in Austin. So Costa is okay. He walks back to his spot in left field. And Angelo leads St. Edwards one to nothing in the middle of the second inning in their second ball game. So Will Finning will make his way up. Will today hit by a pitch and scored back in the second inning. Flew out to center, had that solo home run to give the Buffs the lead in the top of the sixth. 
And in the seventh, he grounded out on a pop-up that the catcher was able to get to. Kind of a excuse me swing. And he was able to grab it and throw him out at first base. Fenning, batting from the right side. Fouls that one off at the plate. So Fenning down in the count 0-1. Still Colton Brown out on the hill for Lubbock Christian. Buffs lead it 9-4. That's golf down the left field line, fouling out of play. So Fenning behind in the count 0-2. Scottsdale, Arizona Jr. Settles in the bat from the right side, playing right field. Oh, and that time he got hit, and that is on the elbow. That was on the back elbow, so you got your elbow back a little bit. And that one caught him. So he'll head down to first base. They're going to come out and check him real quick. It's one of those you got the elbow pad on the lead arm, your left arm is a right-handed batter, but not on your back arm. And you have your arm back. And that one just came in and got the elbow, got the funny bone, really. And that is, I'm sure, a rigging endorsement for the hot tub as you watch this one right here. It's caught him. And so that'll bring up Brian Bailey, the DH now, batting for Nolan Kuhn. He came in to pitch run for Nolan and scored back in the seventh inning. Bailey's first at bat today, batting 326. Bailey batting from the right side. Looks at a pitch low for a ball. Bailey out of Lancaster. 5'9", 165 pounds, Southmore. Brown comes home with it. That's going to be drilled out to right field as that slides a seeing eye single. And coming around to score for the Buffs is Eric Ortiz. So Ortiz able to motor around and come home on Brian Bailey's single. And he'll get an RBI for that. As we watch right here, it's Bailey stays with it and drives to the right side of the field. It's by the diving second baseman Hensley and goes out into right field and Ortiz will come around to score and pushes the Buffs lead to 10 to 4 in this one. Will Fenning at second base with Bailey at first. Isaiah Madrid, first pitch is down low for a ball. Buffs lead at 10 to 4 here in the bottom of the eighth. Buffs have scored in every inning except the fourth. And they have had to come from behind as the Christian jumped out to a three to nothing lead. Fouled off at the plate. So that evens the count at one and one. Madrid, who grounded out to the shortstop, his last at bat, singled back in the sixth. That grounded out to short and a third base. His first two attempts today. Has a 247 batting average. Sends this one towards the shortstop at third baseman. That goes through them. And so Madrid will get a hit. That'll play another run for the Buffs as Will Finney comes around to score. Ryan Bailey will motor around to third base. He was off with the hit. Madrid at the corners, runners at the corners now for the Buffs. Again, that just it was a seeing eye single between the shortstop and the third baseman. Neither one could fully get a glove on it. Mendenzona tried, but just couldn't come up with it. And so. Gives the Buffs an 11 to 4 lead. That brings up Paul Whitman as Whitman will come up to bat. A 
11 to 4 buffs with the lead. Whitman looks at a strike. Runners at the corners. Madrid at first, Bailey at third. All this with two outs, too, by the way. The first two batters were a line out and a ground out for Badgett and Becker. And the Buffs have scored all those. Here's a throw down to second base as Madrid kind of works his way back. Have him in a rundown. Now here comes the throw to home and sliding in safely is Bryant Bailey as that was Madrid trying to get him into a throw all the way. He ends up at second base. And Brian Bailey comes around to score. Now the Buffs lead it 12 to 4. And that'll bring the pitching coach for Lubbock Christian out as he wants to visit. Really more, I think, not so much with Colton Brown. His pitches have kind of been there, but it's with everybody else. And so you watch on the replay here. They throw, try to get Madrid. He stops. So he goats Lubbock Christian into a throw. And so they do. Now they come home with it. Cade Ward comes home with it. And Gibson just can come up with it as Bailey slides under the tag. So the Buffs lead it now 12 to 4. So WT 12 runs on 15 hits. There's been they've had committed one error and they've left eight on base today even with that. Brown still out there pitching. There is an inside-out swing that goes foul down the left field line and out of play for Paul Whitman. So Paul down in the count 0-2. Runner at second base is Isaiah Madrid. Colton Brown. And got him swinging, and that's a strikeout. That is out number three, but the Buffs with two outs are able to get three runs on three hits. There were no errors in the inning and one left on base. We have played eight complete. WT leads this one 12 to four. As we go to the top of the ninth, Buffs trying to close this one out. We'll take a time out and be back after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. WT student athletes drink low-fat chocolate milk post-workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low-fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low-fat chocolate milk to your post-workout routine. Bring your dog to work day today, or an opportunity to maybe adopt as the Buffs lead this one 12 to 4. We go to the top of the ninth. Good crowd on hand for K9 Appreciation Day today. Also, thanks to our sponsor, Metadrive Pharmacy. As Chris Rodriguez comes out to try to close this one out for the Buffaloes, and he'll face George Mendezona. And George looks at a strike here as we go to the top of the ninth. Buffs, 24 and 7 in Lone Star Conference play, trying to stay right even with Angelos. This one's popped up and out of play. So Mendenzona behind in the count, 0 and 2. He'll be followed by Larry Letha and Mason Donahoe, 
two, three, and four batters in the lineup for Lubbock Christian. Nathan Blackwood in his 19th season at Lubbock Christian. Matt Vandenberg, his 14th at WT. Off-speed pitch. And the zona does not pull the trigger, so let's head right by for a ball. One ball and two strikes. That one misses for a ball. So two and two now the count. But Christian four runs on nine hits. They've committed three errors in the ball game. And the left nine on base. This one has popped up. And trying to see who's going to take control. Becker's running in, and he's able to get it. Well, that was one. Everybody was trying to converge on it, but Adam Becker takes control. And again, the wind blowing in. So that just took that from basically third base to the pitcher's mound. As Mendenzona flop pops up to third for out number one. That brings up Larry Letha, who singled his last at bat and was left stranded at second base. He's grounded out to shoe third, had a double, and hit by pitch and scored back in the first inning. Letha settles in, ready to go. Looks at a strike on the outside corner. Senior center fielder now ready. So too is Chris Rodriguez. Gets the pitch he wants. Off-speed pitch. Doesn't bend for him. He was a count of one and one and trying to throw a curveball there. It just did not break at all for him. Rodriguez working in his second inning of work. That's going to be popped out of play. So that runs the count to one and two for Larry Letha. Rodriguez checks the pitch, circles back around to the pitching rubber, now is ready to go. That's going to be popped down the right field line, and that probably is going to circle foul and out of play, and does. Again, the wind blowing in from left field. So as we've seen, anything up in the air is really going to go flying all over the place. That one's outside for a ball. So it's a 2-2 two -two count for Larry Letha. Buffs lead at 12-4, top of the ninth. One out for Lubbock Christian. That's going to be outside for a ball. So runs the count full. Mason Donahoe in the on-deck circle for the Shaps. Rodriguez gets the pitch. Letha takes a cut, comes up empty. And that is a strikeout for Chris Rodriguez, his first. And that is out number two for Lovett Christian. It comes down to Mason Donahoe as we watch this. Nice pitch on the outside part of the plate. Larry Letha goes for it. So Donahoe, who is three for four at the plate today, he has three singles. They also lined out to the shortstop back in the third inning. And swings at the first pitch he sees and sends it foul. Donahoe with a 367. That batting average has improved throughout the ball game today. Coming into this one, he had 30 hits. Now he has 33. It's 91st plate appearance. It's going to be low for a ball. So that evens the count at one and one. Should he get aboard? And Jared Gibson will 
B in the on deck circle. So 1-1 one, one pitch for Mason Donahoe from Chris Rodriguez. Swung on. Good off-speed pitch he was out in front of. So he checks with the umpire to make sure was that going to be a strike had he not swung. And Donahoe is going to step out for a moment. Getting the wind blowing in on the batters today, so some dirt even though there is no dirt here in the infield. Still something getting in the batter's eyes. We've seen it for both teams today. So 1-2 count for Donahoe. Pops this one up. And this one's coming back. And right at the fence was Kennedy Badgett. And almost had to protect himself. He was running so hard he ran into the fence. I came back here where the fans are. So that ball is retrieved. So again, still a 1-2 count. That's popped up, fouled down the left field line. Buffs giving chase. Becker over there, and that's going to go out of play. So that hits in foul territory and bounces back. Keeps the count at one and two. Donahoe stays alive. So Rodriguez gets the pitch. One, two, count. Comes home with it, and that's drilled out to left field for a base hit. So Mason Donahoe continues his hot hitting today as he is four for five at the plate. And I'll bring up Jared Gibson. Gibson struck out his last at bat. He lined out to the second baseman, Eddie Savoy, back in the fifth inning. Grounded out to Savoy in the third and had a two-run home run in the first inning. And that was when the wind was blowing from the west. It's now transitioned to the north. Gibson first pitch swinging. Comes up empty. Looking to tattoo the baseball if he got a hold of it there. So no one count on the sophomore catcher. Gibson ready, Rodriguez now ready. Chris has that one fouled off and out of play. So an 0-2 count on Jared Gibson. That's drilled toward past the shortstop. Madrid diving for it, so back-to-back -back hits as Gibson keeps it alive here. Donahoe heads to second base. Buffs lead it 12 to four. That brings Cade Ward up, who has struck out twice today, singled and scored, and is grounded out to the third baseman. Ward, the third baseman, first baseman for Lubbock Christian. The senior settles in, ready to go. Fort Worth native, batting from the right side. That's a little low for a ball. Two. So Rodriguez working a little quicker. I think he's just trying to get a punch out here. So Ward ahead in the count two and zero. Oh. That 
and this is high ball three. There is action in the WT bullpen. Rodriguez throws a strike in there. Ward taking all the way. Rodriguez checks the wristband. Two outs and then two singles for Lovett Christian. That's high for ball four. So Ward walks. So that loads the bases for LCU. And that brings up Carson Ogilvy. 12 to 4, Buffs lead it. Ogilvy with a 337 batting average. Walked three times today and he's singled. So he is one for one at the plate. That's it down the left field line. Fouling out of play. So Ogilvy down in the count 0-1. Buffs trying to wrap this one up. Put a win in the win column and split the series with Lovett Christian. That's low for a ball. Evens the count at one and one. Kennedy Padgett gets the signal, sends it in to Rodriguez. He looks at his wristband, walks to the top of the pitching rubber. Gets his set. Hit down towards third. Becker has it. He'll step on the bag, and that'll be the ball game. As Adam Becker able to come up with that one. As the Buffs will come away with a 12-4 win over Lubbock Christian. And improved to 27 and 7 on the year, 25 and 7 in Lone Star Conference play. At the moment, they're tied with Angelo State, who's also 25 and 7. And Angelo playing two today. So a big win for the Buffs as they come away with a 12 to 4 victory. Lubbock Christian falls to 24 and 10 overall, 22 and 10. They fall back another game. Still in third place in the Lone Star Conference. We want to take a timeout. We're going to do so. Then we're going to have some interviews for you as well as the Buffs win this one by a final of 12 to 4 over Lubbock Christian. We'll have this break and be back after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading-edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shimon Dillon Group for your appointment today. Bud Light, proudly brewed. Well, welcome back as the Buffaloes win this one 12-4. Colton Charholm gets the win. He improves to 7-2 on the season. Cannon Davis takes the loss. He drops to 1-2. and two. For the Buffaloes, again, they got were able to come across with 12 runs in today's ball game. As, uh, again, just the bats came alive, especially late in the ball game. Inning six, seven, and eight as the Buffs scored a run, take a lead in the six, five to four, then four in the seventh, and three in the eighth. 
and that made a big difference for WT. Uh, again, they pick up the win. The loss goes, as we mentioned, to Canada Davis as Lubbock Christian falls to 22 and 10 in LSC play, while the Buffs improve to 25 and 7. We'll come back with an interview with Coach Matt Vandenberg and also winning pitcher today, Colton Charnholm. But first, this break is the Lone Star Conference Digital Network continues after this. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Well, welcome back to Wilder Park as the Buffaloes come from behind and win today 12-4 to over Lubbock Christian. Part of the reason for the win was the relief effort of Colton Charnholm who comes in today. And I know you never know what the day is going to hold for you, but what was the mindset coming into this one today? Um, you know, it's all hands on deck. I mean, we already dropped two this weekend and, you know, preferably you like to go ahead and win three or four or sweep at home. But, you know, today I just came in with the mindset. It's like we got to win today and I'm glad we were able to come out and do that today. So how did you feel out there today? You got those win you're battling. Obviously that was causing some problems. And so while you're in there pitching, you kind of get in a jam late in the seventh when the bases are full and then you're able to strike out two to end the inning. I know you were pumped up coming along. <laughs> Uh, you know, it was a great feeling. I mean, for me, it was just going ahead and trying to get my job done, just go ahead and pass the ball to the next guy. And, I mean, just executing pitches. I mean, the wind, yeah, it can be a pain at times, but I think I think today it, was, it wasn't too horrible. 
You know, the, the interesting thing with the wind, too, just a little bit started out of the west that came around to the north, and so that kind of makes you change a little bit of your, maybe not mechanics by any stretch, but it does make your mindset, maybe. Yeah, a little bit of the mindset, you know, sometimes with the wind, go ahead and changes how your pitches move or whatever, but today I was able to go ahead and get a little bit of it working down in the pen, so coming out here wasn't too much of a change. Talk about the offense just a little bit, too. That helps out for a pitcher to get a win, obviously, and so today the Buffs got behind three to nothing in the top of the first, then fought their way back each inning scoring. There was only one inning you guys did not score today. And so when the offense came on, especially late in the ball game, does that kind of let the you know, everybody exhale just a little bit? Uh, yeah, definitely for sure. I mean, it was definitely good to go ahead and be able to go ahead and tack on one, at least one every inning except for that one. But as soon as we were going ahead and able to put up some of those crooked numbers, definitely as a team go ahead and there was definitely a sigh of relief. Congratulations on the win. Colton improves to 7-2 and two on this season. That's a pretty good way to go. Yeah, definitely a good way to go. All right, yeah. congratulations. All right. Thanks Thank very much. Colton Charnholm joining us here on the postgame show. Now, Matt Vandenberg will work his way in here. And the guy's probably the hardest-working guy in baseball right now this weekend, at least with a club like Lovey Christian. Talk a little bit. I know this is the great way to end the series, but it's kind of one of those up-and-down series uh, through the weekend. Yeah, listen, Lubbock Christian is a really good team, and I thought we played really good three out of the four games. Um, you know, Friday night was a tough loss, but you start looking at everything. I mean, we did everything right, and that's just baseball. And that's why I told our guys Friday night, listen, we struck out 17 of their guys. We out hit them. We didn't make any errors. I think we only walked like one guy, and, you know, we hit balls right at them, and they got some uh, balls that go through and stuff, and that's baseball. I don't mind that loss. Uh, now, again, I don't like to lose ever. Um, <laughs> Game three, listen, game three has been an issue for us all year long, and we got to figure it out. Um, offensively, we got to figure it out in game three, and then obviously on the mound, we got to get better as well. So, But I did like the way the guys came out today, uh, found a way to at least salvage the weekend. I hate splitting at home. We're better than that, and uh, hopefully we'll be better the next time at home. Well, talk about this one a little bit. You got behind three to nothing, and then you kind of chip your way back in until the sixth where you take the lead five to four. Yeah, that first inning was tough. Uh, you know, Ryan out in left field misplayed a ball. Um, you know, it's tough with the wind shifting directions all the time. He misplayed it. Listen, I thought Isaac did a really good job today. Uh, that's his first start of the year uh, with some guys down and everything. He came in and, and did a good job, kept us in the game, and that's all we really wanted him to go three or four innings, and then we were able to go to our bullpen, and they did a good job. Colton did an outstanding job for yeah, us. Yeah, talk about Colton coming in, too, a little bit. Again, when you're behind and you kind of got to work through some things, he seemed to find a groove a little bit midway through in the in the fourth or in the fifth and sixth got in a bit of a jam in the seventh but then you got to be pleased with the effort to get out of it yeah and that seventh was huge I mean he went uh, you know they had bases loaded one out and he went strikeout strikeout that's huge and we tell all of our guys out of the pin listen some of our best arms are out of the pin and we believe in winning games late and you know it's it's tough on some of those guys they want to start obviously they want to start I'm sure Colton does Brennan does a lot of those guys want to start uh, but we're better if those guys are out of the pin and they're doing a phenomenal job for us so they've had their ups and downs for the year uh, but that's going to happen and stuff but for him to be able to throw up some zeros in there and keep us in a ball game when we're chasing uh, some runs and everything is, is huge for us to get us a chance to win and the other thing too is the offense came on late in this ball game today too as well you took the lead and then it seems like everybody relaxed a little bit yeah, I mean, it, it was a tough day to hit today. I know, you know, we hit some balls really hard, and they made some really good play de plays defensively. Um, you know, I was really happy even early on when we wasn't scoring runs. I mean, Eric Ortiz hit a couple balls hard to left field that on any other day here at this park, they're gone and right. stuff. So, again, that's baseball here in the panhandle. Sometimes the wind blows in, sometimes it blows out. And right. today is one of those days where, I mean, like the ball Becker hit, I mean, their left fielder was literally just staring at it and thought it was gone, um, and it doesn't even leave and I mean on a normal day that that ball no telling how far that yeah. far that ball would go yeah, absolutely well again you know the month of April is a tough one for the Buffaloes and so a tough series next week when you head down to Angelo uh, to San Angelo take on Angelo State right now you guys are tied for the top spot yeah, you know, just another weekend in the Lone Star. Um, every weekend's tough. I mean, I know uh, it's it's a tough eight-game stretch, but even after that, I mean, we still got um, International and Kingsville and St. Edwards. Listen, every weekend, I mean, just because it's Angelo at their play doesn't mean anything. I mean, listen, it is just another weekend in the Lone Star Conference. we got to survive another weekend. All right. Matt Vandenberg, congratulations on the win. Nice one today. Appreciate Again, it. they split two with Lubbock Christian. Again, the Buffs win this one by a final of 12-4 to today to wrap things up 
and split this series. Then they go on the road. They'll head down to San Angelo. Our final again from Wilder Park. Buffaloes win it 12-4. to Thanks to the Thunder Vision crew for bringing you the pictures throughout the day today. Jacob Griffith, our director, taking care of everything. 